All right. Thank you very much for uh, joining the webinar today. I appreciate it. I can see that a couple people have already started joining. So we're going to just let people roll in, give it about two minutes here, and we'll get started. This webinar will be recorded. Um, and, you know, just if I can share a few little things before we get started, I would encourage you um, off, you know, just off the bat to have a pen and paper ready for any questions that you'd like to ask. And then as you come up with those questions, feel free to put that in in the Q&A box that's given to you right in your attendee profile browser. So that way, as I go through each slide, each topic, what I'll do is glance at the Q&A box, check what questions are in there. You can feel free to also upvote any questions that are asked by other members any questions that seem to be important to multiple people. people, And um, we also have an end, end of event Q&A. So at the end, we'll go through um, a little more personal one-on-one -on -one Q&A. You can raise your hand, you can uh, submit your questions, and I'll make sure to properly uh, answer your questions in full detail in case I don't have time to answer them in full detail as we go through each single slide. But other than that, um, as you can see, today's webinar is about the basic business of being a voice actor. So what I'd like to mention is that, um, you know, this is not going to be a creative endeavor. This is going to be a webinar that's comprehensive and also focused mainly on the business of voiceover. And, you know, please treat this as an open engagement. Any questions that you have that are business related, just so we can stay on topic, please feel free to submit those questions. There's going to be a poll that you can answer throughout the chat and a survey after the chat in case you want to answer any questions regarding your experience. Now, just as a friendly disclaimer, I want to mention that, you know, I'm not going to be speaking on certain things about the voiceover industry, for example, Fiverr. And it's mainly because I don't have experience in that realm. Um, everyone has an opinion about Fiverr. And me, mine personally is I respect every, anybody's hustle. So if your hustle is Fiverr, man, that's awesome. But the business that I'm gonna be speaking on is something that I've done firsthand over the past 10 years to build a full comprehensive voiceover business. Let's call it a hybrid model. Now the hybrid model is the traditional model of Hollywood agents, casting directors, and the hybrid model would be the, the new school, the digital strategy, creating your own website, maintaining your own contact list, going through LinkedIn, finding ways to have a digital president, a digital presence. And all these other ways that voice actors make part-time income in voiceover, they're all validated in their own way. So feel free to mix and match whatever type of way you want to make your money and create your business. But I'll be speaking mainly on what I know and what I've done for myself. Registered webinar attendees will also get a downloadable PDF for this webinar. And what that's going to do is going to have all the different little links on there that we're going to go through and you can click them and reference them really easy. So that might be of benefit to you. The webinar is for all levels, right? There's some basic information, especially in the beginning. There's some basic level information, but as you go through the webinar, you'll notice that the information gets a little more nuanced, a little more detailed. So you know, let's get started. I value you. I value your time. And I want to make sure you know that anything that I submit to you today is all going to be done with grace. And I'm going to make sure that I answer all questions. And I also want you to know that I only speak on stuff that makes you successful, that made me successful. So it's going to come with um, a certain level of confidence when I speak on it, because I want to make sure that when you leave here today, 
you have tangible things that you can go put in action into your voiceover business. Doesn't matter what type of business you run in terms of Fiverr, not Fiverr, old school, new school, hybrid, digital, doesn't matter. So let's get started. And um, what we're going to do is start with, start off with just the basic, um, let's call it agenda, right? So I've, I've been, I, I want to make sure that you go here with a certain level of confidence that you know you're going to have a way to contact resources, different con um, people in the industry that you can connect with, whether it's agents, casting. I'm going to name a few casting directors that you can add on LinkedIn, a few people to keep an eye out for their audition in case you get an agent. That's going to give you a foundation on how to build relationships with people that really are influential, influential in the voiceover industry. So you're going to leave with specific strategies to grow your digital presence. I'm going to be talking about everything from keywords to tools to help you, uh, tools that help you accomplish any of your social strategies. So for example, Google Keyword Planner. We're going to go through a little bit of Google Keyword Planner. Uh, I do have a, let me check something real quick. I have someone uh, saying there might be some, can you do me a favor and anyone let me know if you're experiencing any technical difficulties. If you can see my screen, hear my voice, if it's uh, all good on your end, feel free to just maybe um, raise your hand for me. Cool. So if you can raise your hand, that lets me know that you can hear me, see me, and everything is good. If you don't feel that way, feel free to lower your hand, and um, I'll make sure I can get this resolved for anybody that has any problems. Good. So I'm getting some good confirmation here. All right. Cool. So it seems like most of you, if not all, can hear me, see me, and all right. So... I've got a couple people rolling in, so I'm just going to wait another minute or two. We won't spend too much time, but I'll give another two minutes just to let the end people to roll in. I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll that you'll see. You can answer that poll anytime during your experience. And you'll see that in your bar. There's also going to be the Q&A section. Feel free to have any questions in there, and I'll make sure to keep track of those questions. All right. So it seems like most people can hear me, see me, and they've risen their hand. Um, let me check one thing here. Come on spend a minute here just messaging anyone that's having difficulty on their end before we get started on the first slide here. <clears throat> All right. And if you, you know, I have to uh, continue the presentation for time's sakes, but for those experiencing any type of delay, it may be a problem on your end because um, I have gotten confirmation that it's good for most people. So I'm going to go ahead and continue just to respect everybody's time. Uh, but I will make sure this is recorded and sent to you right away. Let's get started. Okay, here's a basic agenda for today. We're going to be talking a little bit about the studio. It's the foundation of your voiceover endeavors. I'm going to give you a little bit of examples, tools that you can kind of create to make your studio a much better studio. I'm going to show you a little bit about my studio. I'm going to spend some time on rates, negotiation, and contracts. Union, non-union, doesn't matter. We're going to go through a couple of that, give you a couple of examples and cover the, all the bases. 
most of the chunk of this is going to be spent on your website, SEO, and digital strategy, going over the different tools. A little bit of 15 minutes about networking, agents, and LinkedIn. 45 minutes or maybe a little bit less if we answer questions throughout the event, uh, just Q&A. But again, the end of the event Q&A, I'll, ho I'll make sure to answer more comprehensively for every question that you have. All right. The voiceover studio. Now, you have to invest in a quality setup before pursuing this career. Now, it's very important that you're aware, please be aware that I didn't have a professional studio when I started voice acting. I voiced out of my closet. In my closet, I had clothes to dampen sound, kill, kill a little bit of that extra sound. I didn't have an expensive mic. I had a, I think a $200, $100 mic, a basic interface. But as you want to expand your career, your goal should be every few years to upgrade your equipment, to upgrade your studio. Because what happens is everything is being upgraded in the ecosystem from the computers, the RAM, to the applications, to the needs of big time studios and the way they connect with clients. That's all being upgraded. So it's beneficial if you upgrade your studio every, every few years. You can upgrade your microphone, you can upgrade your cords, you can upgrade your software, you can upgrade your plugins, but you don't have to start at an expensive place. And that's very important for me to outline. A lot of people think you get a microphone, you got an expensive one, you got an expensive setup, everything is good, you make a lot of money. I promise you it's not the case. I was making part-time, good part-time income out of my closet as a voice act. You can do the same with the space that you have. Your goal is to make your space the best space you can make it. There's a lot of tools that can help you make your space better. Software tools, I'll give you an example. If you use a noise gate very effectively, a noise gate for a simple um, brief explanation, allows you to eliminate certain frequencies that may be interrupting with your audition. The lawnmower outside has a certain frequency, the noise gate will help in reducing that noise gate. Noise gate editing is an art. Because if you use the noise gate wrong, you eliminate natural breath when you're talking, and that becomes a problem. So it's an art, but it's simple. Another thing you can do, as you see in my booth here, and I'll show you an example, will also be Oralex foam, or something like the Porta booth. Now, the Porta Booth is an interesting little device made by Harlan Hogan, he, you know, a voiceover guy who created like this voiceover essentials um, page. Let me actually go to it if that's okay. So let me show you this real quick. Uh, you guys should be able to see my page. Uh, you should be able to see my voiceover page here. This is going to have a bunch of little tabs. Let me. This is the Porta Booth. Now the Porta Booth is this thing right here and i i don't have no affiliation with these people but i've bought their booth so i have the booth it's a pretty good booth it's a small little thing that has some that's very portable you can take it on the road put it in your car very light fly with it but is it gonna do you want to record big time jobs in there probably not but it gives you the ability to dampen sound a little bit more this is a cool resource and a cool site if you want to experience different products they have for voiceover stuff. Again, I'm not affiliated with these people. I just like some of their products. So voiceover essentials, not a bad place to start. Let me go to my page real quick. So you should be able to see my screen here. And um, this is my voiceover page, but specifically just my studio page. And I want to talk about the studio for a bit. If you can see in my little video on the top right here, you'll see me in the booth. I use a microphone, the Sennheiser 416. It's a great microphone. It's a foundational microphone. A lot of people in promo use this microphone, but it's not great for everything. If you want to do 
video games or certain jobs, you might want to change up that microphone to more something that allows for more range and dynamics. But I've used this microphone for a long time because it cuts down noise really well. Noise behind the mic, noise on the side, there's none of that. It's one directional. So I just speak into it. It helps with that, right? So if you have a noise problem in your studio, you can work around it with certain products to help you better that noise. Every mic is differ different. Everybody loves mics for different reasons. So don't, don't feel, you know, you don't have to go out and get this microphone. Just give you an example of a good one that helps me, helps me cut noise. This is my, my little mixer, Apollo UAD, Apollo Twin Mixer, and some Mark II. It's a beautiful mixer, simple to use, has great plugins, has great sound, allows you to upgrade and downgrade very easily with their legacy products. But you know, pricey side, about seven, 700 bucks or so. But you don't have to start with this. When I first started, I had the Focusrite. Scarlet focus, right? It's a beautiful little thing, little red, little mixer. And that's a great little mixer to start with. You can also go, let me go back to over here to the essentials. This is the original. Okay, so it's got generation three now. So this is the mic port pro generation three. Now look how small this is. It's a very tiny. Don't mind the microphone. The microphone ain't that tiny, but the, the guy, this right here is really tiny. You can see it's like bigger than the palm of the hand, maybe a little bit bigger. Very portable, pretty good sound, made for the simplicity of voiceover recordings, right? Allows you to kind of have whatever type of input you want, output you want, has a cool little limiter, has a couple of compression stuff, I believe, um, and a gain knob. So this is another option. So you have what I, you can go with some I have, you can go with something that is more simple, something like the Focusrite, or even something like the Micport Pro. There's a plenty other out there. Um, this is, you can see in the video, or you can see in the picture here, my vocal booth. Now, let me switch over to the vocal booth site. Am I right here? Now, this is, again, there's many different sites, and I'll name a few in, uh, as we go through the slides here, but this is the one I bought, right? Vocal booth. It's going to vary on cost depending on the quality you get. You can go and get a single panel, a double panel, really thick. The thicker it is, the more sound it's going to isolate. You do not need to go out and go spend, I don't know, 10, 15,000. It takes to do this. That's not what I did. You can go get a used one. And what happens is a lot of these production companies, traveling production companies will have one that they'll take some of these vocal boots, use them for a production and then sell them on Craigslist or sell them on, you know, offer up or something. Buying a used one is a great endeavor. Putting the used one together could be challenging. So, <laughs> so if you're trying to put the used one together, that might be a little challenging, but everything has a solution. I encourage you to look at used ones. Let's move past the vocal booth. Let me go back to my presentation here. So one of the main things I love about having my own voiceover studio, sorry about that, is, um, oh, oh, move faster than I could, uh, is Source Connect. Now, Source Connect, what's happening? Source Connect allows you to connect with your engineer, your team that's recording on the other side with professional audio in real time. I would consider Ethernet for a stable connection, not Wi-Fi. It tends to give you a little bit of problems. Your environment should have acoustic treatment before you go out and go get Source Connect and go get these things. Don't go get Source Connect. What is happening? I'm sorry about that. Give me one second here. Don't go outside and go get Source Connect. Go invest in all that money if you haven't fixed your audio. So I would encourage you to work on the audio, get it sounding right, then go ahead and get Source Connect. We're gonna go, go, I'm going to go through Source Connect, the plugin, in a different slide here. 
some of the other vocal boots that you can kind of focus on or participate and get are the Whisper Room, the Studio Bricks, and we talked a little bit about the VoiceOver Essentials Porta Booth earlier. Whisper Room, almost like the, you know, the vocal booth, a little bit different customer service, a little more legacy of a product, still good though. Studio Bricks, I believe the company's headquartered in Spain, very sleek designs, new types of booths. Um, that's also a great option. There's a few tech experts in the industry, and I think it's imperative that everyone, if you are not able to acoustic, acoustically treat your own environment to hire a tech expert, please know if your sound is off, you could be the best voice actor, but you're gonna have an uphill battle Making sure that your EQ is right, making sure the frequencies don't sound off, is not too boxy and all these little things is very important. An essential part of my growth has been Tim Tippett's. He's helped me ever since I started voice acting 10 years ago. So I have a long relationship with him. George Whittem is also excellent. Great, I've attended some of his webinars. When I want to refresh some of my knowledge, I'll go hit up George Whit Whittem and go attend a webinar. Uncle Roy is also well known for some of the EQs and the, and the stacks he makes for your, your DAW. These are people that you can hire and reach out. If you just need to get your audio tweaked, you need to adjust a few things. Real professionals that deal with the sound and as your environment changes. So you go from a closet to a booth, you can't use the same plugins. You can't use the same stuff. You have to change the sound because everything changes. The frequencies change. Hire, hire a tech expert or attend a webinar and learn about it because it'll be super beneficial, I promise you, as you go on this journey. We went through some of my equipment and um, an example of another high-end one that I didn't mention is the Avalon brand mixers, like the 737. I mean, these mixers are very complicated looking and very robust. If you go look up the Avalon 737, it kind of it seems intimidating. It's also very expensive. You'll find them in big production music houses. I don't think you need that for voiceover. But if you can afford it and you like that journey, that's cool too. Again, mine is Apollo Twin. It's worked well for me for many, many years. I like it because it's portable. When I need to take my laptop set up and do audition somewhere, I can take my Apollo Twin, power it really easy. So it makes it uh, available. When it comes to DAWs, digital interfaces, where you record your auditions, where you record your voiceover jobs, there are many options. The free option is Twisted Wave. It's a, it's, it's a great little product that many voice actors use and it's not too complicated to learn. I've been using Logic Pro for many years. If I were to restart voice acting, I might go with Adobe Audition. I probably really would go with Adobe Audition because it's focused for voiceover industry. Some of the tools that it gives you are a little more in depth, but if you are a user of a certain DAW, Pro Tools, whatever, consider maybe just learning voiceover on that because the transition to a, you know, something you're really efficient at, where you can do an audition, edit, and change real quick, that transition to a new software to go learn may be challenging. Now, if you're a musician, you're like, hey, I want to do voice acting and I want to do music. Maybe consider Logic because of the music samples, the music beds, the multi-track where you can add different tracks and different drum kits and also do voiceover, right? So depending on you, depending on your goals, depending on your journey. We talked about microphones just a little bit. And I would encourage you to rent a few different microphones. This is just one website, right? This is just one, um, but there's many. This one's uh, proavrentals.net. 
but there's many depending on the location where you live. The goal here is to try different microphones in your environment. They don't have to be new. They could be used, right? They're essentially, you want them to be used in case they get damaged or scratched up. You can go buy a used microphone on eBay, but I would encourage you to rent. Rent two, three different types of microphones. Don't just rent one that's a shotgun. Rent a shotgun, then rent a dynamic range microphone, and then rent something old school that allow you to see what your voice sounds like in the environment that you have at that certain time. This will give you a great range of understanding of how your voice sounds because you may have a specific type of voiceover genre you're working at if you're you want to do just promos you might just stick with this sennheiser 416 but if you want to do commercials you might try a newman a neumann i'm sorry a neumann um and these different microphones by renting them will give you that insight so i think it's very important and often under you under un, underutilized to go just rent a microphone for two three days and see how it sounds so that's um that was really helpful when i was looking into microphones because you can ask people all say hey, how's your mic sound how does your mic sound hey, my mic is great it's the best mic in the world but they don't have the same space as you in the environment the acoustic treatment the all the little things that noise bounces off of so be cautious consider renting Live sessions, man, I love live sessions. I love, as a voice actor, you should embrace doing live sessions fully, fully. It is the amount of connections I've made through having live, connect, live connections, live sessions has been tremendous. You get, to, you get to be in the room and build a relationship with people with a lot of money who are taking that money and hiring you or somebody else, and for an hour, you get to make an impact on them. You get to show them, hey, I'm a professional. No matter where you're from, Fiverr, no, none of that matters, man. The point is you want to show these people you're a professional. Having live sessions, I've met so many voice talent that don't want to do live sessions. A live session is a beautiful opportunity. You can connect Skype. You can connect on your cell phone. You can connect on Microsoft Teams, Google. You can connect on more advanced stuff like Source Connect. You can have a landline. There's infinite opportunities for you to schedule a live session and then charge for that live session. I'll give you an example. When, if I can just take a step back, please, in your in the Q&A box, let me know if you are not maybe familiar with the concept of a live session. I can talk about it deeper at the end of the session because I want to make sure you have a full understanding of the purpose of having a live session. So if that is you, feel free to please write in that Q&A box. That would be really helpful, and um, I'll make sure to answer that. Um, sorry, it's tripping again. Boom. Okay. <clears throat> what I love about live sessions, one thing, it allows limitations of multiple revisions. If you don't offer a live session, the likelihood of you keep getting revisions from clients will increase. In a live session, you get to go through the nuances together. Hey, how do you like this? How do you like that? How do you like this attitude? How about this change in energy? How about this change in pace? What if I did this this way? Boom, the client is in there. They're in, the, they're in there and they're getting it resolved right away. It just I'm not saying it's impossible for you to get revisions later. I'm just saying that it saves you a little bit of that revision time. If you don't offer a live session, please make sure you offer a complimentary round of revisions. That's standard. And, um, you know, consider a fractional rate for revisions and session fees based on the size of the job. Let me talk about sessions, session fees for a second. It's an it's a underutilized leverage that you can have with clients. This, everything is an upsell. Most people that no live session, 
okay, I'll quote this much. But then some people will say, hey, I'll do the live session. The price is this much per hour, 100, 200, 300, 400. You don't want to go too crazy, but, but it, it, it's like a, it's a fee that you charge just for your time live connecting with your client. As you get better, as your career grows, as you book more jobs, that session fee can go up a little bit, a little bit. But usually it's a standard session rate. Um, union, non-union can vary a little bit. IPDTL is a great way to do live, so, live sessions. I don't use it often. Source Connect is preferred by the industry and myself and many people. It's just the service, the simplicity, the connection, the lack of dropouts. Some of the other ones, are, Badalgo, it's a website, we'll go over it later, but Badalgo Live is a free option included in that membership of the site that you can do live sessions via the website included in your fee. So it's a beautiful option. And of course, people are familiar with Zoom. Let me glance at the Q&A real quick, just because I know I see one in here. I've heard a live session, but I'm not sure what it is, how it is. Ah, perfect. Uh, I'm going to answer this. I've got a question coming in saying, I've heard of a live session, but I'm not sure what it is. Anonymous, no problem. Live session is the ability for one voice actor to connect with their client who's hiring them. To be able to go over the script and the direction and the creative process in real time, whether by means of a software-based connection like Zoom, Skype, or an old school like phone, landline, and connecting that way. And I think I've covered overall what a live session, the purposes of it is other than that. But if you have further questions, uh, feel free to just, again, pop it in the Q&A and I'll make sure to answer it. Thank you for that question, though. Source Connect. Source Elements, the parent company. You know, they've really improved their products throughout the years. Source Connect uh, is a great little software that you pay for that allows you to connect with a, another end user somewhere else in the world, in another country, another city, at the same time in real time. They will be recording your sound into their studio. So they get the real time sound into their equipment, into their setup. Amazing equipment. It's changed and revolutionized the way voice actors do business, do live sessions, and allows us as freelancers to really connect as our own studio with another studio in real time and provide that professional service, that service that you can charge for, that service that you can upsell for. Now, Source Connect has a few different versions. Source Connect now is their free version online. You're going to have to use Google Chrome. But it's an ex excellent option. Let me see if I pull it up actually real quick for you guys. Um, it's an excellent option. Okay, so source connect now. You'd go on the website. You would create an account, sign in. They're going to give you a code or a passcode, whoever you're connecting to. You put it in, got Google Chrome, and that's it. You connect to them. And they connect to you and it's free live session for free so that's another way that you can do it source connect has a product called source nexus and this this product let me go backwards i'm ready to do that there you go thank you uh source nexus is an excellent product love it use it every single day I encourage you, if you're a professional voice actor, to check out Source Nexus. What it does, it allows you to listen, play back, and record various inputs into your recording DAW. So whether you're using Pro Tools, Logic, Twisted Wave, doesn't matter. When you have Source Nexus, you're able to go ahead and Record the director, the creative on the other side into your system. You're able to go on YouTube, record the video, the music in audio form. It'll record it into your DAW. There's benefits to that. Say if a client hits you up and shares a music reference from YouTube. 
you can use Source Nexus, record it from YouTube directly into your DAW, have it as a music bed, and then do the audition or the job with the music bed underlay. That allows you to, you know, maybe do a better audition because it teaches you the emotions of the piece. Source Nexus is a great product, not affiliated, but I use it every day. I encourage you if you want to be a professional and grow your business to one day consider these products. Um, there really will be a benefit, I, I believe, for you. Let's talk about a little bit of editing. And these slides move fast. All right, editing tips. Editing is an art. It, it's taken me time to become a better editor. It's taken me a lot of time. And the time is dedicated in the nuances of editing. You have to be patient when you're learning various editing techniques. If you want to learn editing techniques a bit faster, yeah, you can go to YouTube and these free resources. You can also hire an audio engineer as a consult. There's so many of them. Audio engineers who are sitting in booths all day. Ask them for an hour consult. How do you edit a voiceover track better? How do you EQ better? How do you use a noise gate better? I've utilized the one-on-one -on -one consults with audio engineers as a great way to accomplish some of these things. I can, if you email me directly, I would be happy to provide you some names for audio engineers. The dog clicker. I wanna show you guys something. Let me let's 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 get let's hop in here. Let me uh show you what this <laughs> this infamous dog dog clicker does. So you guys should be able to see my screen here. Um, it will be the logic. This is my logic setup. Let's make it like this, nice and big for you guys. If there's any problems, feel free to just put in the Q and A box. You can't see the screen or something or the chat box. I will make sure to uh, adjust. Okay. The dog clicker. Before I get into the dog clicker, let me show you what, what you're looking at first. This is my DAW, Logic Pro. Here are different tracks that I have for various purposes. This is my playback track. If I record something, I, I then put it in this track and I just listen to it. This track right here, the second track, is my record track. When I record an audition or a job, this is where I use Nexus. I want to record the director notes. I want to record what he says and what takes he likes. Gives me that option. These are miscellaneous tracks, not really of to worry, but music track. I got a music track in there. You can put the music in however way you want it. If you have Nexus or you have a file, point is I like having music on one track. Right? So that's what you're kind of looking at here. Let's go here. Let me press record. This is going to be a quick little example of editing and a little of the tools I use. So if I'm going through the audition here and let's just say, uh, you know, it's a couple seconds long and I make a mistake right here. That dog clicker makes this giant spike. And that lets me know where the mistake is, right? Because in context, yeah, audio is waveforms. And you, you see how I'm talking like all the waveforms are the same? Can you imagine doing a file that's like three hours long, 4,000 words, and you make stumbles and mistakes and you, okay, I make a mistake. Okay, let me take it back. Okay, I make a mistake. Let me take it back. It's really hard to edit. An editing tip, dog clicker. Boom. I know where the mistake is. I pause it. I pause it, or I or when I'm done, doesn't matter. I know where my mistake is. I come in, I click, I get rid of the mistake. Chop, chop, it's gone. Easy, right? Oh, okay. There's my mistake. Boom, gone. Now you're seeing you're seeing my auto my track here, automatically go back to the setting. That's that's just settings in your DAW, right? The shortcuts in your DAW. You can program your keyboard to make those settings. So let's say this is edited, I'm digging it, everything is good. I move it here. Here's Nexus. I'm gonna I'm gonna 
play back a recording of what I just did, and you're going to not hear me for a second. That dog clicker makes this giant spike. And that lets me know where the mistake is, right? Because in context, you have, audio is waveforms. And you, you see how I'm talking like all the waveforms are the same? Can you imagine doing a file that's like three hours long, 4,000 words? Okay, we're back. So oh, I see a Q&A. Let me make sure. I, can you do this in GarageBand? Great question, man. Great question. Absolutely. Let me answer this live. Answer live. Can we do this in GarageBand? GarageBand is an awesome tool. GarageBand is the baby logic. GarageBand is the foundation for logic. You should be able to do this in logic. However, I don't know how Nexus would work in logic as well. We can look into that. You can, I, I'll help you. You can, you know, we, you have a scheduled time with me. We'll go in and we'll try to solve it together. But yes, great question. Thank you for it. Um, but you should be able to, especially because GarageBand is the baby logic. So I popped in the playback track. The reason I got the playback track, it's a great option. You're doing a live session and the client, want, hey, can you play that back for me? It's a simple thing. I can just play it back. And they're able to hear it live and I can make adjustments. I can delete it. Boom. And I can re-record. So that's a great way to uh, go about your sessions, especially when they're live. Let me ask you guys a question. Um, if you don't mind, in the, you know, in the chat window, if you don't mind. Please list the DAW that you have. Let me know the DAW that you're working with. That'll give me some insight into what, your, what tools you have and where you can either uh, benefit from certain improvements or not. Uh, you can do that in the Q&A. And uh, also, what tools are you using for editing? Do you have Source Connect already? Do you have certain tools or plugins? Feel free to put that in there. That information is helpful so that I can refer back to it as I speak to you one-on-one. -on -one. Let me show you a couple other tools because they're really important. Let's go with the first one here. This is, um, this is the RX, right? This is a great tool. This is a denoiser. The, the, this is a, a company called Isotope, and I'll, I'll go through this later on. We're getting a lot of questions. Nice. Thank you for your participation. Uh, we'll, um, Isotope RX creates plugins to help you manipulate sound. The denoiser is a great tool for loud environments. You got a lot of noise, you try the noise gate, you try the microphone, you try the double booth, use a denoiser. Especially, a, and you don't have to abuse the denoiser. You just wanna use the simple little tweaks on the denoiser. And what it's doing here, you see what happens? When I start talking, the wave goes high. And then when I'm silent, look what happens. I'm silent, but then you still see little bit waves moving. Those little waves are the sound that's just naturally in my booth. We'll call it room tone. The denoiser will help you adjust any noises that are bothering your final file. This is a great little tool. Also from the same people that are, again, not affiliated with these people, just tools that I use. This is the Isotope RX, D-Clicker. It's a great little tool. The tool really allows you to, check this out. See all those clicks? Those clicks can become really obtrusive when you're recording a nice long voiceover session for a professional job and you got, well, the D-Clicker does a great job of taking away those clicks. Now, you're not seeing anything here right now, but if I was to record something and then the D-Clicker would automatically pick it up and adjust it, it takes out those clicks. Let's say you don't have this. Old school trick, a green apple. Green apple has pectin. You have a lot of mouth noise, a lot of clicks, you got a little pectin. 
chew on the green apple, clicks will go away better. It'll dry your mouth up a bit, but if you don't have the declicker or a denoiser, another way you can use to kind of help facilitate those noises. This is one of my favorite tools. Now, this is not from Isotope RX. This is from uh, Waves, Waves Audio. Make a lot of plugins, different types. This one's called the Arvox. Arvox is an awesome tool. The Arvox allows you to do a few different things. It allows you to have a noise gate. So you got the noise gate right here, right? What you see here, the gate, when it says minus 55, is just the dB, the decibels. As I make this go higher and the number goes lower, you're going to hear cutting out and not hear me well. As I lower it, it allows all noise to come through. The purpose of this noise gate is to kind of put a threshold on what frequencies are coming into your booth, into your audio file. That's the purpose of it. Depending on your environment, depending on where, what you're working with, you're going to have to adjust this. It's not, my setting is not your setting. My setting is not your setting. But the tools are there for you to play with and adjust to your setting. I don't use the compression too much, but once in a while I add a little compression. The compression will kind of equalize the different sounds. Say we're talking really soft in a part of a file or an audition, and then the other part's really loud, it's up here. The compression will kind of equalize this. this. It'll kind of, it's a great way to bring whispers and bring them higher and make them higher whispers and louder whispers. This is not, this is not a professional who's breaking down the science of compression. This is just a voice actor who understands the basics of it. So please forgive me, but that's the idea. You want to use this sparingly. The gain knob. Again, this is um, if you want to bring low frequencies up, you, you or down. Say say you got a peak, right? So you we caught that audio file. Let me record. We caught that audio file. You got a peak. Stop that. What you see here is just difference in gain, right? When it's peaking like this and it's clipping audio. That's where the distortion happens. You don't want the distortion. So these tools are made for you to prevent distortion. You can lower, if you see the peaking, you can lower the gain. Let's say that peaking wasn't there. And this is just too low. Well, then you'd raise the gain. And that'd be a great way to um, take care of some of your editing needs. Um, let me look at the Q and A because I see we got a few in there. So let's uh, Garage Band. Also, we got some Garage Band users. Awesome DAW, Adobe Audition. No Source Connect. That's okay, but it has great Source Connect ability. Adobe Audition has great Source Connect ability. Works really well. Um, let me answer that live. Thank you for that question. Adobe Audition, awesome tool. I would encourage you to use it also source connect highly recommended garage band we answer that one um adobe audition we got a lot of people using adobe audition more adobe audition see what i mean if i if it wasn't for logic i'd be in there Daw, Lo i got one logic pro user and a pro tool perfect that's a great combination great combination um <laughs> with, the, with those two things you could do anything music voice acting video games you can do anything with that so that's great too we have a question here. If I hear the mouth clicks, should I keep recording or stop and hope that RX, the D clicker, will take? That's a great question. Man, I got to answer this live. It's an excellent question. Thank you for this question. So let's say we do an audio and you hear the mouth clicks. It is the presumption and the assumption that you have set up the D clicker and the denoiser and the noise gate correctly before recording. If you've done that correctly, you could wait and they will fix those situations. 
if you just got the tool and you got a job coming up, I would encourage you to record a short little sample. Make the sample short, 30 seconds, no more. Then take the denoiser, take the declicker, and play with the settings just on that little sample. And then continue the longer recordings. That's how I would answer that question. Because what you don't want to do is rely on a perfect situation where the declicker, denoiser is going to handle everything. But your performance could be off. Not your performance only, but you may have way too many clicks. You may have way too many noises. My best advice, set your settings prior to recording big jobs or paid jobs. Get the tools. Mess with the tools. Then you don't ever have to adjust. I never have to go in here and readjust any of this. That should, that should answer that question actually perfectly. I don't ever have to go in here and readjust my denoiser, readjust my declicker. Sometimes I got to readjust the gate because I tend, I do a lot of jobs that are like soft and, soft and whispery. They're like right here. So then it, it gets really breathy. So then I have to adjust my gate. Then I have to adjust the gate, right? So what I would encourage you to do is set your settings prior to, and I think that will solve, and you never have to adjust them afterwards. Thank you for that question. It was a great question. Garage band, garage band and North Source Connect. No problem. That's okay, too. That's okay, too. Thank you, for, guys, for being patient. I hope that was helpful. I hope that was insightful as we went through a couple of these, uh, a couple of these uh, examples. My setup, how I... I don't change this setup for jobs. I don't change this setup for anything. The sound I have is the sound I keep. Because what happens is you do one job, they come back a couple months later, said they want a revision, they want to change it. If you change your settings, the, the, it's going to sound different. My best advice is to have a backup of a backup of a backup of your template and plugins and settings. I've been down the journey where I had to readjust the EQ, readjust the frequencies, readjust everything because the settings were off. Once you find the sound, stay with the sound. It'll serve you better. So now we went through the dog clicker. We went through the noise gate. When you bounce the audio, an audition, unless specifically told, Two to three takes, bounce them around minus 3 dB, minus 6 dB. Just make sure it's not clipping, not distorting. And I think uh, from there, you'll be fine. So let's, let's move on to the next slide. You know, um, if you're getting some good information, okay, and if you feel this is relevant and good, hey, man, show me some love. Just give me, give me a little reaction or something. Let me know it's being valuable to you. Um, I want to make sure you're getting, you know, stuff that's valuable to you let me glance real quick oh thank you i see some there it is i'm gonna look at um some more questions make sure there's any that i miss no we're good let me make sure the chat chat window thank you thank you for being patient as i make sure i answer all questions let's go to the next slide okay we went through the editing tips we went through the isotope, the RX, the waves, the normalization. Ah, we didn't go through the normalization. Let me talk about it real quick. All right. This is another thing people are very, they're very uh, specific on. Don't normalize, normalize. If you normalize, it's bad. Do it before, do it after. Normalize. I like to normalize my audio, right? I record a certain way, and I like to normalize it afterwards. The way Logic does normalization. Boom. Normalize gain. There's a couple options here. I like to use the loudness. Okay, LUFS. L-U-F-S, LUFS. It's just a metric for the level. And uh, it's a term, it's an industry term for sound and the measurement of it, I believe. And the other way you can do it, if you didn't do loudness, is peak. Normalize it at minus, remember I said earlier, minus 3 or minus 6 dB? So if I did minus 6 dB, look what happens here. Look what happens here. Let's see. Boom. You saw that? Let me, let me go back and show you again just in case. 
boom, normalize, okay? So if I do LUFs, same thing. Minus 23 is usually the LUFs I keep it at. See that? It goes up. Normalize brings something that's really low volume, right? Look at this. Really low volume. It'll bring it up. And it'll make it louder. That's what you, you don't want it always loud like that. The point is you want to normalize audio so it's nice and loud because here's something you will notice. If you did an audition or a job, I would encourage you to take it and listen to it in your cell phone. Then go listen to it in your laptop. Then go listen to it on your computer in your studio sound. You'll notice that the levels change. A good normalization will help it sound good on all different devices. So I like normalization. I use it often. I'm a fan of it. But it has to be done correctly. So awesome. Let's move on to the next slide. We've covered a lot of editing stuff. And uh, now it's time to talk a little about this money. I respect everybody who participated in this webinar and paid. Man, I know you, you've trusted me with my opinion and my, my feedback. And you more importantly, you've given me your hard-earned money. I don't take it for granted. You have worth. And if I didn't feel like this information could make you money, I wouldn't have charged, I wouldn't have given any of this information. It can make you money, I promise you. Rates, negotiating, and contracts. This is a big part of the money game. And there's an art to it. A lot of people think it's just numbers. No, there's an art. There's an art to supply and demand. There's an art to negotiation. There's an art to it. My goal is to give you a few tips, if I may. Let's talk about the basics of negotiation just a little bit here. Um, you know, I had to become a better negotiator. It took some time. Negotiation, someone very close to me gave me a tip that negotiation is about what's tolerable. Negotiation is about what's tolerable. Now, what's tolerable, it involves many factors. In voiceover, having an agent can flex that tolerability a bit, right? Let me expand on this. Let me give you a real example, a real job example. Last week, I got an audition. I did a job for a freelance client, right? They're doing an internal video internal voiceover video for a large company. I quoted like, uh, I think 750 bucks. You know? They came back and said, oh, our original budget quote said uh, uh, 200 bucks. But we really like your voice. We really like the way you delivered it, et cetera, and your professionalism. When a client is telling you all the things they like about you, it shouldn't do boost your ego. What it should do is make you feel that you have something to offer that you can make money and charge on and upsell on respectfully and as a professional, of course. Okay, so you like my style, you like my voice, you like the professionalism. Cool. What's tolerable? I'm not going to ask him what's tolerable. I'm going to ask myself. All right, I said 750. 200 is not tolerable to me. 500 is pretty tolerable. It's pretty tolerable for me. Hey, it's 500 cool. Is it tolerable for you? Yeah, 500 is tolerable. Boom. Not, see, negotiate about what's tolerable. And you don't know what it is until you get in it. Everything is based on leverage, especially in non-union world of voice acting. It's all leverage. It's demand. Do you have the demand for the price that you seek or are asking for? The marketplace does tell no lies. I remember taking jujitsu classes. I suck at jujitsu. I'm a learner. I'm a student. I just like to learn. <laughs> I would get on the mat. And I would get pinned by teenagers. I remember my coach saying, Kabir, I'd get frustrated, right? Hey, man, I've been reading the books. I've been watching the YouTube videos. I get pinned by a teenager. You don't have time on the mat. You have to have time on the mat. You have to have time on the mat. 
You have to have time in negotiation. You got to practice it. You got to get in there and negotiate, and then you'll get better at it. And then you understand what your worth is. Now you understand what your worth is. You tell the marketplace, this is my worth. Why? Because my clients pay me this and they think it's tolerable. If you're going to ask for a certain price, do yourself a favor by becoming valuable. What does that mean? If I want to negotiate better, and I have used this in sentences in email, I really respect you, and I respect every client and their budgets. I appreciate you. But in full respect and honesty, I believe my professionalism, my quality, my efficiency in communicating your needs, my professionalism in protecting your confidentiality of your big company, I think that deserves a premium. So this is my price. But I'm always flexible. But this is my price. That's how you negotiate. You got to show them love. Right? You got to be cool with them. You don't want to come up and say, nah, you're, you're 200 bucks. That sucks, you disrespectful person. You don't want to do that. Because the relationship matters. It's all poker. So if you treat it as poker, you can learn to play the game better. Don't show your hand before. Don't show that you're willing to do it for this price or that price. Someone said you could do it for that. Leverage. Understand your worth. And then build up to it. The better you get, the more you can ask for. I want to I wanna say something about negotiating session fees. I don't, think you should, I don't think you should negotiate session fees as much. Because you, sh you should have a floor for the time invested. So if it's 200 bucks for an hour, cool. If they're like, hey, can you do it for... $100 for half an hour, that's your discrepancy. That's your decision. And I'm going to tell you, that, that's okay too. But have a floor. Stay strong in your session fee. Where you want to negotiate is your usage fee. Kabir, we have this company. We want to do this uh, usage for only 13 weeks on the internet. You can negotiate that. That's negotiable. Don't negotiate the session fee. Try not to. Again, with exceptions for churches and nonprofits and people who just, you know, PSAs and stuff like that. I get it. But try your best not to bend too much on the because you want to feed. You want to get something for your time, right? You want to get something for your investment, for your, for all the knowledge, for for everything. So, I think a hundred, two hundred bucks is fair for a session fee. As you get better, as you book bigger jobs, man, session fees can go four hundred an hour, four fifty an hour. How many, of you, how many of you guys have negotiated a contract before? If you can just put in that Q&A box, if you've negotiated a contract or a job recently or in the past, and, you know, how many, how many what was the budget? Like, well, how, did you, how did you work through the budget conversation? If you feel like sharing, feel free to share that information. A recommended read. It's not a bad read. So you can get it on audiobook. You can get the book. I listened to the audiobook. Chris Foss, Never Split the Difference. It's a great book. It's a great audiobook that teaches you the art and the subtleties of negotiating. I think you'll find some worthy um, information in that book. Let's move on to the next slide. I'm sure many of you have heard of GVAA, Global Voice Acting Academy. If you haven't, please let me share this with you. It's a great tool. It's a great foundation for you to negotiate your voiceover rates. It's also a great place to go when you want to talk about the nuances in the different types of voiceover, the different genres of voiceover, the different prices, the usage, the terms of voiceover. Let's go over this. I, I'm excited to share this with you because I really love, I love this site. Again, not affiliated in any way, just really appreciate the website. And, you know, one of the, th one of the beauties about this website is you can share it with clients and educate them on industry standards, respectfully, of course. Because the truth is, man, some, look, we all are amateurs and then we become professionals. So there's amateur like videographers, amateur marketing people, amateur people work for big companies, but they're just learning production. 
they may not be familiar with the cost of voiceover, the different usages, the different terms. It's a great place to send them. What you see on this page, voiceover categories, different genres, they're all here. Let's break these down a bit. Let's break this. It'll be beneficial. Let me zoom in in here. And um, there we go. Okay. Check this out. So at first, it's very, it's a lot of info. It's a little confusing. Too much going on. But it's in simplicity. If you see right here on the left column, this column is telling you the term for usage on the voice. Just like musicians have usage for the music and blah, blah. We have usage on the voice. You go from local to regional to national. That difference is nuanced. Local could be Los Angeles County. Regional could be Southern California, Northern California, a little bit of Arizona. Multiple states starts going into national. Hey, this is going to be playing in seven different states, all across cable, etc. TV tags, you're not, the whole voiceover is silent in the commercial and then you just do a tag at the end. Brought to you by Coke. That's it. There's a separate price for those. So this is the categories, right? This is just TV. What you see in the middle is the price ranges. The differences are, they're subtle but they're quite, quite vast in some cases. And it's because of the talent, the type, the nuances, and the details. <sighs> if you have Nike come to you and says, hey, I'm Nike, I want to do a national one year. There gives you a cool little range to start off at 3,200, 3,500 bucks for a spot. But then you got mom and pop Los Angeles shoe store. I want to do a national it's still going to be playing in multiple states for a year. Same usage, different size company, different size budget. One's billions, one's maybe, maybe a couple hundred thousand, a million dollars of revenue. In that case, you might want to lower that range. And that's okay. That's your business. This gives you a good range. That's why I love this website. The notes, they're just nuances, right? The different places you can upsell, not upsell, charge, not charge. As you go through, now I, I happen, um, the automotive, I didn't really know about no automotive voice acting, you know, prior to a few years ago, but I've been working, you know, as a voice of a lot of these Mazda commercials. And they're union based. That's why you see union rate as the first one up here. But let's say they're not union. And let's say it's any car brand and they have a local dealership in a small town. These, this is where this comes in handy, right? So you got a, a Mazda, but it's not Mazda National. It's like Mazda, I don't know, the Mazda dealership next to Kabir's house. In that case, you might want to lower these rates. And you're not going to be charging the same. So the nuances are there. You have different categories, in-show, documentary, narration, corporate work, right? As we go through each one of these, I'm not going to spend too much time in detail for each one, but I just want to show you the different types of genres. So we have infomercial, direct, I don't do a lot of those. Those, A lot of these, they pay much lower than like commercial work. But you know what is becoming very popular and you can price pretty high on now is the gas station LCD screens. I'll give you an example of like an audition I got like this about a year ago. It was like truly a uh, hard seltzer. But they were only running the truly hard seltzer commercials on national gas stations. It never used to be like that. Ever since COVID, you'd see gas stations have LCDs. Boom, a new genre, a new place to put commercials. And voila, you can charge money for that. So even though it's not TV, it could be gas station based. PSAs. I, I do PSAs every now and then. They pay a lot less and as they should, your expectations might go down. PSAs are public service announcements, medical, COVID related, or 
anti-smoking, stuff like that, suicide, you know, stuff like that. Um, have a little more purpose behind it. Feel free to charge less on those. Radio, you got the terrestrial radio, right? R traditional radio stations. This media is, uh, one could argue it's dying or that at least it's a lot less work. Where this has transitioned to, um, where this has transitioned to is online radio, right? So this has transitioned to Pandora, Spotify, where you get into streaming radio. So if, if you, if, if you want to charge for streaming a specific way, I would encourage you to have a baseline rate for it because streaming ads work different, especially different platforms, 200 a spot, 300 a spot. And then they have, you know, 50 tags that go with like local municipalities or something. In those cases, you want to go ahead and um, charge a specific base rate and then per tag or per per streaming location, let's call it. You can get on the rosters of Pandora and Spotify and place iHeartRadio. A lot of them become sponsors at voiceover conferences. You can see their booth there. And that's a great way to meet them and get on their roster. Um, highly encouraged. Digital broadcast. Now, again, a new genre. A new genre of voiceover. This specific area has been Hulu, uh, Netflix. Now, ne if, if you're into like... <laughs> corporate news. Netflix just announced they're going to be doing paid advertising model. So on Netflix, you're going to start seeing ads. Well, that's where this comes in, digital broadcast usage. In the Q&A box or in the chat window, let me know what type of genres of voiceover that you've seen so far, digital broadcast or any of these that you may be interested in, that you may have needs of help or help needed in negotiating or that you may want me to expand on the topic in the Q&A section. Maybe you want me to talk more about the rates of digital broadcast. Maybe you want me to talk more about um, streaming. Let me know. These rates would be similar to like national TV broadcast usage. And everything is negotiable. Again, use the same model, the big Nike company versus the small shoe store. Find a way to have a range, have a, have a, have, a, have some flexibility with how you charge people. Scrolling down, we're going um, in respect of time. Non-broadcast, corporate narration work, e-learning, explainer videos. This makes up for so much of the voiceover business. And I really think that, you know, the model has drastically changed where in the beginning it was like you had to go through the union and that was the only way you got corporate work also, but corporate work now is on pay to play websites. You can market yourself to companies and talk to the production assistant. See, let me give you an example. Most tech companies do like live events and at those live events there, they always need voiceover for like most of the time it's like motivating employees at these live events, but those pay money. You know, you look at something like this that pays, you know, you got a 10 minute video that pays six, 700. You could even upsell that. Let's say you want to edit that for them. Let's say you want to um, provide multiple different sessions and multiple different videos for them. This is all upsellable and it makes up for a lot of work in voiceover. So I encourage you to be open to this type of voiceover, maybe more formal and that's okay. You can adjust your formalities. We can work on your creative and how to get a more formal read and make your enunciation better. We can work on all these things. But don't, don't keep yourself from doing these types of jobs. As we scroll down, um, you'll see like stuff that's had like podcasts, intro, outros, YouTube content, explainer videos make up most of the work in corporate narration probably. I would even argue it's a little bit low. You know, single video, 90 seconds, 300, 525 bucks. If it's like Microsoft, $1,000, you know, 800 bucks, 900 bucks. If it's like um, a startup, oh, okay, 300, 350. Have that range. Um, if you're going to do bulk video recording and audio scripts, 
have some sort of revision policy in and a fractional rate for those revisions and also have some sort of policy about recording all the videos in once or recording all the videos so that you save yourself time and efficiency and pre prevent any big errors especially with bulk bulk video they can get really complicated you have a client that sends you 14 15 scripts 15 videos reference files it can get really wild editing needs to separate the files rename them it can get complicated as we go through gvba it'll end in the bottom with e-learning big part of voiceover e-learning is a big part of voiceover now i will be honest with you e-learning work maybe might see some sort of little bit of less growth as artificial intelligence voice comes and you know <laughs> takes parts of the voiceover business because you see per word here 0 0.2 20 cents 0 0.35 cents a word imagine a corporate client with 20,000 words are they going to pay the 0 0.20 or will they pay the 0 0.00 one cent of a word for an AI voice. It's the harsh reality, but it's not here yet. I'm not trying to scare nobody. It's not here yet, but it is something to consider and think about. But in the good times, <laughs> feel free to charge people a higher rate if they want editing. They want you to cut up the files, separate them, label them differently, have them in a specific order, send them a certain way. Those are all cost things that you can upsell on. Use this as a general guidance. Animation dubbing is, is most of the time is done through like dubbing houses and I'm not too familiar with them. But again, you have uh, rates and examples all listed here. Video games, again, mainly done through union. A lot of union work is done now. But um, let me go ahead and just take a minute to read some of these Q&As because I know there's so many of them. Um, Oh, the man, they're, they're piling up. Thank you very much for submitting. I get shy about negotiating. I don't want to lose the opportunity. Let me answer live. <sighs> I have to answer. Let me, I think we got the idea with GVA. Let me answer some of these questions here. Okay. I get shy about negotiating. I don't want to lose the opportunity. I understand. Thank you very much for that honest question. I understand that you get shy about uh, negotiating, but I think what happens is as you become better, as you realize your worth, as you provide better services for your clients, hey, client X, not only did I upgrade my studio, my equipment, not only will I deliver your file faster, more secure, not only do I have an easier way to do live sessions and upgrade in my system, I'm doing all this in a trustworthy manner. I'm down to be professional. I'll honor your NDAs. We're going to talk about NDAs in a minute. This will give you confidence to negotiate. What else gives you confidence to negotiate? Knowing that people such as myself and other professionals are making a certain amount of money at a job. And let's say you also audition for the job, the same job. I quote $10,000. You quote 500 bucks. Then you find out that they hire me for $10,000. You know how heartbreaking that's going to be for you. You're going to be heartbroken. My suggestion, don't be shy. This is business. Don't be shy. Up your worth, up your value, better your equipment, become more confident, become more professional, and then increase gradually what you ask for. Increase gradually. I hope that answers your question. When it says per spot, does that mean you get that every time it runs or just the one-time fee? It's another great question. Okay, <clears throat> this is a good question. In union voiceover work, you're going to get the per spot fee. You're going to get a session fee, recording fee. You're also going to get a per spot usage fee. Understand what I just said. In union work, 
you're going to get a per spot fee, per usage fee, and a session fee. As you can imagine, it starts adding up. In non-union voiceover work, it's a wild, wild west. <laughs> it's wild west. That's why the contracts matter. If you have a contract in place, then you are able to simply guide the conversation. I would encourage you in non-union voiceover work, you're not going to get per spot usually, but what you could do is charge for cut downs and lifts. I'm not, I'm not talking about a lot. Let's say Nike says, I have one 30 second video for you to do. It's 500 bucks. It's a terrible example, actually $5,000. <laughs> and, um, then they say we have cut downs and lifts. What are those? Just for a quick rundown. You have a 30 second video, has a 30 second script. The cut down and lit, let's go with cut downs. The cut down is be like four other videos that are 10 seconds, six seconds, 15 seconds, shorter script. Some will ask that to be included in your fee. But what you could do in non-union voice, hey, let me get a little something for the cut downs. So if it's 5,000 for the big job, what I would encourage you to do, maybe charge a fractional cut down fee. Nothing disrespectful, 500 bucks a cut down. This is not going to work all the time. As the macroeconomics change, as companies pull back their advertising budgets, <laughs> you're really gonna have to fight for this per spot thing. But I'm not saying it's impossible. Okay, next question. Man, we have so many. Uh, thank you so much for submitting these questions. I hope I'm answering them in the detail that they deserve. Is it better to get a company? Is it better to get on a company roster or get signed to an agency? And will the agency negotiate for me? Another great question. Okay. <sighs> company roster. I'm not sure what company roster you're talking about. I'm assuming you're talking about just a general corporation roster. It's a good question. I think it's beneficial to always have agents. Always. Because again, it goes back to the leverage and the art of negotiating. They negotiate for a living every single day. They know the rates, they know the terms, they know the media, they know the producers. They're going to do a better job in the beginning. And so you become a master in negotiating, then you're the agent. But until then, have an agent. But also be on a company roster. But you have to educate yourself with the rates. Don't go on a company roster and they say, we can pay you $50, but you haven't gone to the GVAA website and know that that work should be paying $700. Then you negotiate with them. There's a place for any everything. Be on a company roster, be with an agent, have a website, do your own thing. It's all there. It's all full of purpose. There's another question, I'm going to answer it live. Is there a negotiation line that you use that always gets the desired rate? It's another good question. Thank you for this beautiful question. Um, <laughs> part of that would probably be in full respect and honesty. I respect you. I respect your budgets and your needs but I also want to communicate that I quote each project based on the final details. I start off with something like that. Does it always get me the desired rate? No. Does it get me to a tolerable rate? Yes. It shows compassion. It shows that I understand. I've had, okay, let me reverse it. I've had, to hire people for my work before a website work or whatever and instead of like going through the artful negotiation project process a person can simply be like no too low 500 or nothing it's not the way to do it you already damaged it so you want to tenderize i like to tenderize negotiation that's how i'd answer that question thank you one more question, I promise, and then we're going to go through these, these slides. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate you. Are those prices for non-union 
or union prices? When should I join a union? Great question. So the benefits of the union, oh, what are the benefits of the union? And are you part of the union? It's a great question. Now, the union thing is going to vary state by state, state specific. Some states are right to work states, meaning you can be in the union and also do non-union work. California not, is not a right to work state. I believe Texas is or Florida. Being a part of the union is a massive accomplishment for those that do it. It's an honorable one. It takes a little bit of work to get there. You got to pay union dues. You got to do certain jobs, have certain auditions, get in the union. Once you're in the union, you have to maintain your status by doing more jobs and converting work. The prices that you saw are mainly for non-union. Unless you saw on the website, on the GBA website, where it says union rates. It'll just say union rates in those words. Otherwise, it's all non-union. So thank you for that question. Let's, uh, let's work on these slides. Okay. Um, let me just check time. Cool. Thank you, everybody. We're, uh, you know, we're making progress. Okay, contracts, NDAs. NDAs have to be respected. NDAs have to be respected and sealed lips. I'm going to give you a real life example of a tragic story. A voice actor who decided that taking pictures of the brand new basketball guy's famous shoes was a great idea during the session. Then he put the basketball shoe script on Twitter. And this man, this person, this wonderful thing, lost six figures. Six figures. Lost six figures because of that one mistake. I've seen it. I know the person. It happens. Man, confidentiality. This is professionalism. This is what you charge for. This is where the value is. When you have large companies, they do not want to at all risk the unprofessionalism. Man, respect the NDAs. <sighs> Hire a local attorney, state law variations, and come up with a simple usage agreement for non-union work. Here's some, uh, here's some words to pay attention to in agreements. In perpetuity, exclusivity, an all-known universe and full buyout, name and likeness. Each one of these things mean different things, but you'll see them in contracts. In perpetuity means forever. Exclusivity means, hey, you're the voice of Mazda. You cannot be the voice of Acura or any other person. Sorry, any other car company. An all-known universe and full buyout means, hey, we can play this thing anytime, anywhere, for as long as we want, no questions asked. Name and likeness this is an interesting one. I'm Michael Jordan. And then I see a pizza shop that comes out with Jordan 23 pizza. We know Zoom. That's name and likeness. You got to pay for that. Voice actors, unless you're like Morgan Freeman, no one's really name and likeness. But it's good to know these terms. Let me go over a quick sample contract for you. Now, if you guys are still with me, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Let's go over a little contract sample. And uh, feel free to write, write down your questions of I might not go back and forth on these Q and A's through the because there's so many questions and I want to respect time. But we all we do have a Q and A at the end. So if you upload your questions, I'll go through every single one. Check out this contract sample we've created. I'm gonna get a sip of water one second. I've got this here. Okay, simple agreement. Now, this is a very simple example. And the reason I want to show you this is so that you see what a non-union voice actor, freelancer person might have to do in hopes to be professional, right? You have the client name, creative director, talent. The end client, whatever that is, is just sample. You know, call it company AYZ. Total number of recordings, five spots, three cut downs, etc. Remember that GVVA categories of usage? TV broadcast, radio, terrestrial, paid placement, non-paid placement, connected TV, OTT. OTT, these are just different terms for 
you know, this right here, Amazon Prime. Just the new form of streaming media. Other. Other could be internal video, kiosk, stadium. I used to be a lot of voice spots for like the um, Kansas City Chiefs. They didn't always do TV spots, radio, or connected TV. They just do stadium. So I'd put that in other. Territory. Worldwide, local, California, regional. You want to put that in there. Initial term starts on this date and the term ends in one year or the term ends in perpetuity, whatever it is. Exclusivity, if you have it, you can list it in there. This will keep track. Notes, payment terms, and then signatures. That's kind of it. Not, I mean, not completely it. <laughs> the second page where you see all this stuff would be depending on your state. Every state is different. I encourage you to speak to a lawyer. But some things you could put is confidentiality, right? Have it a little, let people know that you're serious about confidentiality. Let you guys see that. That's a sample contract. We honor this. We are professionals. These clients, when they get this, they know they're not dealing with an amateur. That's the goal. Show them that you're not an amateur. Let's go on the next slide. Union. All right. <clears throat> Union. If, if, if I can maybe please ask you guys to, uh, in the Q&A box, <laughs> go ahead and let me know if you're in the union or not in the union or if you're FICOR, which I will explain in just a moment. Union. Most union jobs, they go through voiceover agents. Competition is fierce for these jobs. SAG-AFTRA is a merged entity. That's the union. Getting your union membership is, a, I mean, it's a giant milestone, man. It should be beloved and, and just, it's a great experience. However, options to go financial core for those not living in right-to-work states is also present. Financial core allows you in a not-to-work, right-to-work state to go ahead and do union and non-union. It is a personal decision and should be taken seriously with respect. Everyone has an opinion about it. Just do your best to balance everybody's opinions. I would encourage you to participate in the union. Go financial core if you need to. You can convert non-union jobs to union jobs via a paymaster and get health insurance. This is also important. There's you know, nonprofits coming out now that want to convert union, I mean, non-union jobs to union to give voice actors insurance, health insurance. If you are in the union, you get the health insurance if you make a certain amount of money in that calendar year. When we talk about Voices.com, Voice123, and we talk about all these, uh, you know, pay-to-play websites, be cautious of conflicts that arise from union versus non-union work. Let me give you an example. In union work, Mazda pays me not to be the voice of any other car company. That's called exclusivity through the union. And also that's called having holding fees. Hey, we're going to hold you to not be the voice of any other car company. Benefits of union. I'm going to go through some of these Q&As in a minute here, but let me um, give you a union example because we have, we're halfway through the slides and I really want to make sure we get through all of them. Um, a scale session fee of 450 for four hours. Let's call that an example for a union job. One course script with a package of cut downs, a 60, a 30 second, a 15 second, a 10 second script. Okay. You got a lot to work with here. So you got a session fee. You got multiple scripts with cut downs. Residuals. To be determined. This is based on the usage and the term of the spots. So if they run the spots. And they're running it on TV. On radio. On streaming. On Hulu. On your local TV. On everything. You might get 30, 50,000 for this job. Throughout the year. Paid in residuals. Holding fees. Session fees. If the usage is less, it's maybe because it's a shorter cycle. We're not going to run this for a year. We're going to run it for 13 weeks. 
might result in a few thousand dollars of residuals. That's a union example. Let me take a pause real quick. Actually, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on the Q&A for another slide or two, if that's, if that's okay. Just because they're adding up and um, I want to respect time. Non-union. The rules of supply and demand do not change. You have to find what you're excellent at and become high in demand for that specific niche, right? Your price can reflect your growth. So if you are an excellent video game accent person, excellent, you are the best, your price can go up. But if you're an amateur starting out, that price is going to go up over time. And in non-union work, that's how it is because not every person gets the same scale rate. In union, if you're scale, then you just get that scale rate. Everyone's the same talent. Boom. But non-union is a little different. When providing quotes to clients, I want you to ask them questions to simplify the communication of client size, budget, editing needs, usage term, and media. How do we do this? Well, when I have a client that asks me for an audition, in return, I give them the audition and ask a few questions. What is the term of usage? Is it one year? Is it in perpetuity? Is it 13 weeks? Is there archival in perpetuity organic web usage needed? I mean, this is a complicated way of just saying, do you want this to live on YouTube forever? Who is the client? Always have an NDA or ask for one. Asking who the client is, you do not want to quote $50 for a job and it's Nike. Ask for the client name and ask for an NDA so they know that you're going to protect the client's confidentiality. Web ads, streaming ads, radio ads, OTT, tell me more. That's where you leverage your rate higher. The details, the details will, let you, will get you more money. The details will get you more money. Educate yourself on industry rates, terms, and media buys. I'm going to encourage you to not do any jobs below a fair wage, please. Because if you do, it is very difficult to bring a price of talent up. Very difficult. It's way more difficult to bring the price of the talent up than it is to bring it down. Someone can always negotiate you down. But if you set your bar at $50 rate talent, you can't come to them a year later at $1,000 rate talent. That's going to be, they're already set in their ways. They're set with the perception that you are the $50 talent. Don't be the $50 talent. You're worth more. You're worth more, man. If you honor and you become a professional, you're worth more. Set a minimum. Grow and become better and charge more. That's non-union. Let's, um, let's continue with an example. Session fee of $300 for two hours, one course script, package of cut downs. Same example as the union one previously. But this, might, <laughs> this one might get you 10% of the money, 3500 bucks, right? The union one might get you 35000 but the non-union one might get you 3500 this is not a permanent example. This is just an example. There's ranges, there's nuances, there's details. But the example is nonetheless that non-union work usually pays a little less, a lot less, unless you can demand more. But don't lowball yourself. Larger companies should be treated but as such. But also, if you're a nonprofit or a church, man, show the love. Discount that rate for them. That's okay, too. I'm gonna take a pause here. Uh, we're at um, we're making good progress, and I just want to look at some Q. Let's look at some of these Q and A, uh, and make sure I get some. Okay, so I see non-union, union, boom, 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 perfect. SAG eligible, viewed acting, not voice acting. Ah, nice. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So I, we got a lot of non-union in here, and then SAG eligible, which is great. SAG eligible. Um, for those that may not know, SAG eligible. Just, hey, I did a I did a job. In California, you could Taft Hartley it. Um, you can look that term up on Google. Um, I'm eligible to be in the union. I have to pay my dues. Um, and, you know, whether it's on camera or voice acting, that may be different. 
but thank you very much for that. All right, let's talk about a uh, little basics of just uh, housekeeping on the, you know, QuickBook taxes and corporations. Now, this is going to vary depending on what state you're in. Depending where you live, this is going to change. But you'd be surprised at the nuances. So I'm not a lawyer, not a tax expert. I encourage you to speak to a professional in your local area. That's the that's the way you'll get the best out of this, what I'm about to tell you. When I first started voice acting in the business, I was a DBA, right, doing business as. You go from that, and then years later, I become a S corporation in California. There's different type of corporations, LLCs, S corps, right? There's different corporations. I'm an S corp. S corp allows you to structure how you pay yourself a bit more efficiently, allows for more write-offs as business expenses. In California, for my specific setting, for my specific case, just an example. QuickBooks is great for bookkeeping. I use QuickBooks every day. You'll be able to keep data and history of your clients in a central data hub. That is crucial. There's many other tools out there. And using a system that allows you to pay efficiently, pay formally, pay safely and securely when you're dealing with big jobs and big clients. You know how many times I've had producers tell me that they appreciated my invoicing? I've had people tell me they appreciated the way I invoice because they would hire a big job and the person would want money via Cash App or Venmo. It's not going to fly for big time jobs. They want PO numbers, right? They want the purchase order number. They want the date. They want specific terms in the invoice. So if you're going to treat yourself like a business, treat yourself like a business. Consider quarterly tax consultations with an expert. This way you can save on your estimated taxes in advance when you're a corporation. I do this. It's helpful. Lowers your tax bill at the end. Ask clients for invoice specifics to avoid complications, right? You don't want to invoice a client. And then they tell you, hey, can you do it this way? Now you just spent 30 days not getting paid. Ask upfront early. How do you want an invoice per job, per task? Who do I invoice? Who do I email? What is the net? Net 30? That just means, hey, pay the bill after 30 days that it was in your hands. That's a simple way of putting it. It could be net 60. It could be net 45, net 90. I wouldn't go net 90. It's kind of unfair. But <laughs> unless it's like a massive company, then I'd probably go net 90. But, try, you know, I've done it before. But try to get something fair, you know. It'll serve you better. Let's, uh, let me know if anyone has any questions. Put it in the question box. Uh, we'll move on to the next slide. Because this is where the chunk of information comes in. We're already pressing against time. All right. Let me get a sip of water, please. Okay. Now we're going to talk about your website. This is, this is a... This is kind of like the meat and potatoes of this whole presentation. It's going to be very valuable to you, I hope. I want to start off by saying you need to have an asset mentality when it comes to your website. Your website is an asset. Your website is an asset. Your website is an asset. You have to treat your website as an asset, something that you build upon, something that you honor, something that you respect. For your business, what this means is you work on your website every day strategy, content, and design. There's different tools, WordPress. Feel free in, in, your, in the Q&A if you want, put down. Do you use WordPress? Do you use any of these tools? Squarespace, do you have a website platform that you prefer? Now, now that years after working on my own website, I work on the content and hire people for the optimization of it. It works better for me because the content and the strategy takes the most time. When you have an asset, your goal is to make it valuable. Your website for your voice acting website, it means to increase your rankings with Google and your authority score. I'm going to show you those things in a little bit. 
you want to increase your rankings with Google and increase your website's authority score. By using the correct tools, you can grow your digital presence and you can be found on the first, second, third, fourth page of Google. Everyone wants to be on the first page of Google. It takes a lot of work to get there. There's lots of tools out there that can help you do this. I'm gonna, lay, I'm gonna review some. Let me just talk about them real quick. SEM Rush, Ahrefs, Moz, Google Analytics, Google Keyword Planner. These are, some are paid, some are free, tools to help you with your digital strategy. The strategy for your website is going to be different than the strategy for your social media, but they work together. Let's go over some specifics. Having your own blog for your specific niche, in this case voiceover, is going to make you best friends with Google. You know, your people think that you want to create a blog. It's, to, oh, I can get advertising on my blog. It's not the point. The real goal is to become best friends with Google. Your blog should be centered around very specific keywords that relate to your voice and the industry or the genre of voiceover you're seeking. You want to make sure that your voiceover demos, they're centered nicely on your homepage. It's the first thing clients see in here. Your website should be mobile optimized. It should be AMP ready. Okay. <clears throat> You have mobile optimization, which is one thing. Google has this metric called AMP, A-M-P. It's their metric for website ranking, website design, website user experience, let's call it. I'm gonna expand on it a little bit. You have to make sure your website is at least mobile friendly. And if you can get AMP friendly, that's cool too. Gotta get it mobile friendly. Every page on your website, every page should have text, should have words, strategic words that describe your voice, that describe your, what you're offering. Every page should have that, 500 words per minimum. Let me give you an example. Let's get into it. Let me give you an example. We're going to go to my website. Let me pick a page. Okay. Let's go to, um, let's go right here, video demos. Let me, I should do uh, about me. It'd be a little better. About me and we'll go biography. Boom. Okay. What I'm doing here, every single page should have text that has words that describe your voice, describe why visitors are visiting your website and will help them get there. Google picks up on all the text. If you have a banner, it won't pick up the banner as much, but it's going to pick up award-winning Los Angeles voice actor. See, I could have just put award-winning voice actor, but I put award-winning Los Angeles voice actor. Why? Keyword. It's where I live. My LA voice actor. It's keyword. You want to have text. You want to have some videos. Google likes videos. You don't want to overcrowd it with videos. That was the problem I had on my website first. I would overcrowd the website with a lot of videos. The website speed would slow down. It would affect the user experience. Every page needs to have that. Let me actually go to the blog too. I want to show you something about the blog. Okay. If you, maybe in the Q&A, how many of you guys have a blog in, on your website? How many of you guys have thought about it or maybe been told don't do it? What is your experience with the blogs? Do you find them helpful? Have you been on voiceover blogs before? Check this out. I've been writing blogs for a while, a right, couple years, and each blog is strategically done. I spend a lot of time, okay? Everything from the H1 title here to all this text written with strategy, written with specific keywords, specific titles that help Google realize that, hey, this guy is a professional and valuable to Google users. Let's send him more traffic. That's the basic gist of all this, right? 
Let's go back here. When we look at some tools for your website, check out gtmetrics.com. It's a great website. This is one website that I used a lot when I first started creating my website, gtmetrics.com. It's an excellent website. You put your URL in, okay? You guys are gonna be seeing like the, it's not fair because you guys are gonna see like the good part of this. If I showed you where I came from, you would have threw up on your screen right now. My, my scores for my website were horrible. It took forever to load. It wasn't fast enough. People on mobile would bounce right away. It didn't, it didn't optimize the images correctly. It was disgusting. I spent a lot of time working on it. I used to have F. I used to have an F. Okay, an F. The performance, I think when I first started was like a 60 or 50. This is a great site that kind of lets you know where the problem areas are, your issues on the website, how to fix them. It'll tell you how to fix them. And then you have to do the work. Excellent website, highly recommended, not affiliated. Just use it all the time. All right, let's continue. Thank you guys for going through all this with me. Uh, I hope you're finding value out of this. And um, I promise we're almost, you know, we're going to run a little, little tight on time, but I'm going to make sure we get all of it out there. Let's talk about the basics of, basics of SEO, search engine optimization. It's how you optimize your content and website in a given niche and also increase search engine visibility and rankings via keyword targeting. Now, SEO, it's not a short-term goal. It's, this is a marathon. It takes time, okay? A big company, they're going to do SEO, but they're also going to do ads. Ads will get you to your customers quicker. SEO will get it there slower, but it's longevity, okay? Basics of SEO, we have long tail keywords, right? Those are three or more keywords, when you go into Google and type in anything you want to search, think about how many things you type into Google. What are you? Long tail keywords example, voice actor for hire Los Angeles. Voice actor for hire Los Angeles. That's an example for me. Long tail keywords have lower competition because they're so specific. The traffic is less, but they're valuable. You want, to, you want to rank for those words, but understand that they're less valuable than short tail keywords. Short tail, short tail keywords are no more than three words. They're broader. They're not, they're not so vague. More competition and higher search volumes. Example, higher voice actor. Higher voice actor might have 50,000 people search for it on Google, whereas Voice actor for higher Los Angeles might only have 10 people search. See the difference? This can be more valuable, but it's difficult to rank for these things because all, all the companies want to rank for on the first page of Google, they want to, or all the talent want to come up for higher voice actor as soon as that is typed into Google. Google's job is to deliver traffic to their users. I mean, I'm sorry, to deliver websites to the users that the users find valuable in the quickest way possible. When starting out, try attacking the long tail keywords first. Go after the low ranking difficulty ones. Use free tools like Google Keyword Planner to build upon your list of SEO words. We're gonna talk about this in a little bit more specifically, but I know this is a lot of info long tail, short tail, but it matters. And I hope it's helpful. No matter what business you create in life, where your journey takes you, voiceover or not, having an understanding of SEO and digital presence will serve you well. Let me get a sip of water. We went over some of my blogs here already. Let me look, let me just pop in the Q&A real quick and check uh, what's happening here. Okay, we got a Wix user. Wix is great, it has limitations. On, um, on what you can do with customization, but Wix is great, and I've used Wix also. 
Is it better for your website or blog or vlog? Ah, it's a great question. I got to answer. Is it better for your website to blog or vlog? Maybe both. I love doing both. Here's the thing. <clears throat> Google will not rank you just based on a video. Google needs to read the text in the blog to understand the value of your page. But it always appreciates a good video. Not blog, no blog, but issues on what to say or talk about. I understand. Okay. Okay. Great point. I'm a voice actor, but I want to blog, but I don't know where to start. Perfect. 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 The topic for your blog, I would encourage you to start somewhere professional, meaning you don't want to talk about politics and all that stuff necessarily right now. You want to talk about the professional things to do with your voice, the professional attributes related to the voiceover industry. Google Keyword Planner, I'm going to show you that right now, will help you do this. Let me give you, let me, actually, let me give you two websites that are really going to help you do this. So I'm going to answer this right now. Great question. Thank you. I want to have a blog. I got another question. I want a blog, but I don't know what to write about. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to answer that. Not familiar with blogs? Well, but with doing them myself, never seen the point of a blog. Understand. I understand you don't see the point of the blog. I can promise you, I'm going to prove to you the value of a blog in about five minutes. And I'm going to show you exactly the metric to do so. The blog value is basically to become best friends with Google. If you don't have a blog, unless you're a celebrity, no one's going to your website. You need to have text on your website to drive traffic to your website. That's the purpose of the blog. Um, what you write about, we're going to work on that right now. I've thought about it, but not sure what to put on it. On the, ah, yes, see, I, I, again, you guys are asking such good questions. And most of the questions come, I don't know what to write the blog about. At this point, I'm just going to go to the solution because I can see there's a hunger for that. All right, check this out. <clears throat> this is a free tool, Google, Google, Google Keyword Planner. Awesome tool, free tool. Discover new keywords. You're going to create a Google account if you don't already have one. You're going to go into your Google AdWords account. They have a free keyword planner there. Let's type it in. You could start with a website. So I can put in voices.com, voice123. I can put my own website in. What it does is scrubs your website and comes up with all the keywords associated with the website. Let's start here. Okay, let's just type in voice actor. Put a comma. Let's put in uh, higher voiceover. Let's put in um, male voiceover. Okay, get results. Google Keyword Planner is going to give you a lot of information for free. Here we go. <sighs> Right here on the left side, you'll see keywords provided. Average monthly users. Look at this. For voice actor, they put in 10,000, 100,000. Higher voiceover. Boom. I'm looking at this. I'm like, okay, 1,000 people type in the word higher voice over. It's pretty interesting. I'm going to go ahead and save this word. And maybe even this one, right? You can do this. You can plan existing campaign. You can save these words into a list to answer people's question on what do I write about? Well, I see that there's a thousand, a hundred to a thousand people searching for the term higher voiceover. So what that tells me is, let me see here. Let me go back to my website. If you notice, as I scroll through these blog titles, you'll see that some of these titles get very specific. Check this one out. Boom. Voice actors for hire, important tips for producers. This was just an idea. I didn't write this and then go in and see, oh, what should I write about? I went into Google keyword plan or tools such as this. I can show you other tools. I see what people are searching for and then I start writing about it. So, higher voiceover, okay. 
you can create a blog, hire voiceover in ABC City, hire voiceover tips, hire excellent voice actors, a tip from a voice actor. I'm giving you examples. I'm giving you real life things to blog about based on actual things that people are searching for. Now, you don't want to blindly come in here and dig into stuff that is not going to produce any value, right? Voiceover work, maybe, but think about who's hiring you. The person hiring you is not going to type in voiceover work. The pers person hiring you is going to type in hire voiceover. Let's go past another t tool here. This is a great tool, free tool. I got to show you this tool. Here we go. I'm just going to type in voiceover here, and then we're going to talk about it. <clears throat> When you ask the question, which is a great question, multiple people have asked this question, how do I know what to write or blog about? Answerthepublic.com, great website, gives you all the stuff for free on what people are searching for. Voiceover is the focus word. Who, how, are, can, when, what, where, which, right? All these little side ones. Voiceover work. Why is voiceover on Netflix? Why use voiceover? Why are voiceover, what are voiceover gestures? Good voiceover. These are live things people are searching for, and you can answer the public. You want to figure out what to blog about? Come on this website for free, get some ideas. Start writing your blog, and now you have somewhere that you can actually start from a foundation. Love this website. Excellent tool. If that was helpful, shoot me a reaction. Put in the Q&A video just so I know that your answers were met with that because um, it should give you a place to start, and that I can see is very important for people. Go back to Q&A here. How did you get into VO work? Can you tell us about your first gig, how you found it, how much? Yes, I'm going to do that at the end if that's okay, but I 100% will. How do you start a blog? You start a blog by having a website, and on that website, start typing. You start the blog by finding keywords. You start the blog by answering live questions for people on the Internet and becoming best friends with Google. You start the blog by having a title writing a couple of paragraphs. Let me give you a, a framework, 500 words, let's call it. And then you have a message and then a conclusion. That'll get you started. For sake of time, let's keep it moving. Uh, you want to avoid negative keywords you don't want to be associated with. See, in the SEO world, there's stuff as such as negative keywords. I don't want to be associated with cheap voice actor or free voice actor. Avoid these keywords in your blogs. It'll serve you well. Blogs, keywords, SEO. All right, we're, we're making great progress here. Thank you for guys for being patient and still being with me. Um, organic traffic is unpaid traffic. Organic traffic is unpaid traffic that comes from search engines such as Google. It doesn't include paid advertisements. Direct traffic is traffic that comes directly from someone typing in your URL into the browser, kabirsvoice.com into Google, direct traffic. Referral traffic is traffic coming from audition sites and different links from other websites. Google Analytics, Google Search Council are great tools to help you track the metrics of where your traffic is coming from. So if you don't have a Google Analytics or a Google Search Console account, it is free. Go to Google, open your account, sign up, type in your, vo uh, type in your website, and then watch all the data flow in on who's going to your website. Are they going on certain pages and then leaving? It's amazing. Some blogs to, that you can look at in the industry related, J. Michael Collins voiceover blog, excellent resource. Highly recommend it. The blog will give you great insight into industry stuff.
voiceoverextra.com. Great articles. Industry professional articles from coaches, from different workshops that you can take. Great blog. I don't know, Kiro Vio, I believe. Dave Cavassier, blog owner, voice actor, industry guy. Lots of great stuff. Nethervoice.com, again, voice actor. Lots of great stuff on their blog. You can also check out my blog, kabirsvoice.com slash blog. Get an idea of what your analytics and search console are looking like, and you'll be using those tools for the rest of your digital present, uh, your digital strategy. Tools, services, not affiliated, just a user. Voiceactorwebsites.com. They make professional uh, voice, uh, voice acting websites. My website, I made. However, if I didn't know how to make websites and I didn't start that way, I would be going to voiceactorwebsites.com because they not only make websites um, that are good, but they make it specifically good ones for voiceovers. So excellent, excellent resource. WP Tangerine, it's a service that you pay for. WP Tangerine basically allows you to hire them they're based in the Philippines, hires you, you can work on your WordPress website, pay them. They can do tasks like fix this, fix that on the website, do this for a fractional fee a month. Squarespace.com, great platform for building websites, has optimized tools, AMP friendly, etc. VoiceZam, I love VoiceZam. You know, I've been using them for years. Let me just show you this tool real quick. <clears throat> VoiceZam, if you look at my, my website, I'm going to the homepage. Is this is voice sam audio player kind of optimized allows people to download reads and share reads etc voice sam is going to be a great resource for your website mobile ready has a great player has different tools within it that you can uh they're priced differently you know they have different like stuff but consider a tool that's professional you can always do a free trial consider voice sam if you don't want to pay for it, there's always SoundCloud. SoundCloud is a great opportunity to build your demos and put that on there. Let's continue moving along. AMP. I talked about AMP a little bit earlier, but let me just go briefly a little bit more into it. Um, we're pressing against time. I'm making my way through. Here we go. Start building a Google My Business page. Oh, man, you got to have a Google My Business page. Let me show you something. I got to show you. See, now I'm getting excited. I have to show it to you. I'm going to put in... Um, the Beers Voice Inc. Google My Business. No, well, maybe I shouldn't put Google My Business. Let me just put Kabir's Voice Inc. into Google. There it is. Boom. See that? Google My Business page, 67 reviews, five star verified reviews from clients. Please have a Google My Business page. If you have one or don't have one, put that in the chat window. Let me know because I want to make sure you guys understand the benefit of this it will help you rank better it will verify reviews it will show up on your website you want to be verified on here it's it's free it doesn't cost any money have the google my business page get reviews from your clients amp is a google metric for mobile optimization it's critical for google rankings and authority this metric ensures that your website should be mobile first and friendly no matter what program or website platform you're using, AMP is necessary. Your relationship with Google is measured by the metric of your site's authority score. Now, your goal is to build this score. Let me show you what that means real quick. Thank you guys for being still hanging in with me, man. I, I can't. I'm, I'm really excited to show you guys. And I know it's a lot of info, a lot of detail, but it's very important. Check this out. First. Let me go to kabirsvoice.com. This is a paid tool that I have called scmrush.com. There's other ones, okay? This is a paid tool. However, when I talk about authority score, check this out. 25. Let me give you a little bit of history. When I first started, I've been doing about two, three years using this tool. But when I first started, my authority score was about 9 Google, I wasn't even coming up on the first, 10th, 15th page. 
It took a lot of work to build this authority score. This is what you want. Look at the organic traffic. 2,000 people come to my website organically. Backlinks. People are referencing my website organically. Tells you where people are finding me, searching me. Scroll down. The organic keywords associated with my website. Let me give you a contrast example of a larger company. Let's go with Voices.com. If you're familiar in the voiceover industry, this is a big pay-to-play website. Been around for 15 years, probably more. Check this out, dude. 64 out of 100. They have so much digital presence. They have so much authority. This is why their traffic, 317,000 people go to their website looking to either hire voiceovers, be a voiceover, Organic keywords, you can go in here and find all the keywords associated. Tools like this will help you figure out what your competitors are doing. Tools like this will help you figure out what blogs to write. Tools like this will help you understand the digital um, voiceover industry way better. You don't have to pay for it. There's free tools also, which I've listed previously, like Answer the Public. Let's go back. Gradeus.com is an excellent tool that allows you to get client testimonials in an efficient way. Client testimonials are mandatory. You need them. You need the website to have testimonials on there. And if they're verified, even better. Gradeus is a paid thing, but there's other tools out there that are free that allow you to basically efficiently send an email to a, a client, have them fill out a review, and get it right away. It's on your website. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Here we go. We got P2P websites. I know this is a big part of digital strategy, right? Because you want to be on these websites. A P2P website, a pay-to-play website, is a voice actor's hub for auditions and real jobs and production. Companies that are sending scripts and changing and giving you direction every day. You can audition and get better. You want to hone in your craft. Be on these websites. Even if it's just a free membership, get on all of them. If you can afford the premium, get on the premium. If you can afford the second tier, it doesn't matter. You want to get in the habit of auditioning every day. You get to see the different types of scripts out there and play. Not all pay-to-pay -pay websites are the same. Okay, some are better than others. Voices.com has pros and cons versus Badalgo versus Voice123. The casting auditions that come on these websites range from e-learning to commercial to promo to animation to video games. Everything in the spectrum. This will give you an understanding of how and where you can make your money by practicing in those specific genres. Now, having a paid membership, it does give you better rankings on these websites, the paid version of Voices.com, the paid version of Voice123. Voice123 is one of my favorites. I love them because direct communication between talent and buyer. If you want to build a business that does not rely on agents, that does not rely on um, uh, any one specific source, build the relationships directly with your clients. Voice123 allows you to exchange information, exchange emails, build that relationship, and then they become your business. A well-rounded voice actor will never have only one source of auditions, okay? You're going to want to have agents. You're going to have website. You're going to want to have um, the pay-to-pay -pay websites. You're going to want to have a mailing list. This is where you make your money. Let me uh, glance in the Q&A section here real quick. What was the name of the last site again? Uh, if you can, I'm going to answer some of these actually. Maybe these tools are so helpful. Kabir Google Keyword Plan. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I can see people are digging, don't have a Google My Business. Okay. We're going to go through some of these actually later, the Q&A. I want to make sure um, I get more of this information out to you guys. <clears throat> <sighs> Pay-to-play websites. Okay. We're going to go over the three basic ones, the ones that I've been on and am on currently. Voices.com, excellent technology, man. The interface is beautiful. The jobs, eee, they range from a hundred bucks to a few thousand dollars. No direct communication with buyer. No direct communication. Not beneficial in growing your direct book of business. Okay. The jobs, they, 
started going under five bucks, five dollars. They made a mistake. They retracted it. They're no longer doing that. That was just recently too. So they're they're a work in progress, but they're they're definitely a big player. And I've been on their website for a long time. Voice one, two, three allows for that direct communication with buyer. You build your book of business. That's the way to do it. Challenging algorithm system now. It's getting a little weird. Their algorithm is getting a little weird. It's challenging because they'll rank you and then de-rank you and then your rankings will change and not get enough auditions. However, man, excellent high quality jobs. Some of the biggest jobs and relationships I've ever had come from this website. Great customer service and CEO. Love it. Badalgo, important player, especially for international auditions. Now, say you have an accent. Say you have a certain desire of voiceover and you want to do, I don't know, you feel like your voice would do better in Europe. Marketing out there. Badalgo is a place. A lot of jobs outside of the U.S. Smaller frame of competition. Not volume-wise, not that high. You know, you're going to get way more auditions on the other websites, way more. But they're good auditions. They're honest auditions. They're quality auditions, you know, and they range from a few hundred bucks to a low thousand bucks. Again, not going to get auditions on there every day, though. So be cautious. These websites are mandatory for your learning purposes, but you don't need to pay for a service for each one. You can be on a free one, maybe, and then as your career goes, you know, just level up. And I think that'll serve you really well. All right, we're, you know, we're making our way through here. <laughs> Network agents and LinkedIn. Let's talk about it. We got like maybe 10 more slides, five more slides. Just stay with me. We're almost done. Agents, 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 man. Agents matter. They matter. If you want the big jobs, the big Mazdas, the unions, the thousands and thousands, the holding fees, you got to get agents, right? Not all agents are the same. I had to learn this the hard way. Some terrible agents out there. So, good rule of thumb, quality over quantity. The better the agent, you don't need as many. It's a partnership. Once they get to know you, you bring them work, man, doors open. If any agent is asking you for exclusivity, like, hey, you are mine and no one else's, man, they better put a lot of money in your pocket. A lot of money or big opportunity, at least. Regular agent fees, 10% for union, that's usually just across the board for everybody union 15 to 20 percent for non-union jobs now you know that can get a little depending who the agent is 15 to 20 percent but if they come back and say 50 percent that's disrespectful that's no that's not an agent that's a thief referrals from voice actors and coast casting directors and voiceover coaches is the best way to get agents the way i got my biggest agent was because of a voiceover coach that referred me because i trained with him. I got better. He saw me get better. He saw that I had potential. Then introduced me to the agent. That doesn't mean you guaranteed a spot. It just means a door opens. Sometimes it's all we need. The door to open. Agent submission checklist. You want a produced demo before you hit up an agent, please. Professionally produced demo before hitting up an agent. You want to have your website that's optimized, that has content on there, that shows that your information, that you're ready. Have some training, have some credits before you reach out an agent. Agents don't want any talent, man. They want talent that are ready to go, ready to have all their business handled. Digital pitch deck, I think it's still helpful. Some people don't, but I like having it, right? Because what happens is it's a simple one sheet document that you can send via email or do whatever you want. And it'll give them a kind of brief resume of you, right? Who am I? Where did I come from? Here's some credits. Simple, one page. You want to understand the basics of the industry. You want to be familiar with the terms before hitting up an agent. You don't want to go to agent and not understand in perpetuity. You don't want to go to agent and not be able to um, describe certain terms and media buys. It's not going to, we ha there are people fighting for $1,000 jobs, hundreds of $1,000 jobs, and they're super professional and they're really good at their craft. If you want to be one of those people, treat yourself with respect, understand the industry, understand all the terms, and I promise you, you can get an agent too. I promise. It just takes a little bit of work. 
in the Q&A box, type in if you got an agent. Please, let me know if you got an agent. Who is it? Are you with one agent? Do you have multiple agents? What has been your experience? I'd love to know. Casting and conferences. Man, voiceover conferences are great. They're coming back. I encourage you to go to them. Why? Some of the best relationships I've ever made have been at voiceover conferences, right? Because you get coaches there, directors there, agents there, production houses there. People in the business are there. So come ready. Go to these conferences, at least what you can afford and what you can go to. Some of you on this webinar met me at the conference. So go to the conferences. They're really helpful. I've been going for a long time. Sound and Fury Casting. These are a lovely, lovely people. I've worked with these people for years. This one casting agency is responsible for some of the biggest jobs in history of voiceover. I'm going to repeat that one more time. This one casting agency is responsible for some of the biggest jobs in voiceover history. They are an amazing group of people. If you see their name, if you see an audition, I'd encourage you to participate. Old school, Calmison, Calmison, old school. The voice caster, old school. Lane Craig, old school. VoiceOver LA, little hybrid. These are casting people that are actively in the scene. Go on their websites, type in their name in Google. Go look at who they are. Go connect with them on LinkedIn. Go understand what business they're doing. Get, reach out to them. Say hi. Say, I'm a new voice actor. Can you give me some tips? They're beautiful people. Some of them. <laughs> some of them. Get in front of key casting directors by taking their workshops. I met a lot of casting directors by simply taking the workshop, a community workshop, right? It's a beautiful way, a beautiful way to get to know these casting agents. They do the biggest jobs. If the casting audition is not on an audition for a pay to play, it's in the hands of a casting agent. Participate, get on these people's newsletters, get on their profiles on LinkedIn. All right, let's keep it moving, we're almost there. Demos, demos and demos. Demos are important. We're gonna talk about these demos because I know everybody has questions about demos. If you have a demo, Please list, I have demos or don't have demos. I want demos. Whatever you want, put in the Q&A box. We'll talk about these demos, right? Demos range in prices. Your voiceover demo should be done after extensive training. Please, the mistake I made. I was a terrible voice actor when I started. I sounded horrible and I made a demo, cost me two grand and the demo was garbage. Big mistake, I had no money either. Put on a credit card. Don't make that mistake. If I let you listen to my first demo, you would throw up again on the screen. So take your time. Don't rush the demos. The more specific you can get with your demo, the better. You don't create the demo based on the voice necessarily. You create the demo based on the genre. Here's my explainer video demo, my e-learning demo, my commercial demo, my promo demo. Create these demos based on the genre. That's what you want. Let's review a little bit of demos on my website real quick. Get down like this. Boom. Commercial, college, explainer, e-learning, TV, church, poetry. Not everyone's going to have church poetry or, or college, university, right? These are things that I'm good at that I get paid for. I make a demo. Standard, commercial. E-learning, TV, political, radio, telephony, promo, corporate, standard. Don't feel like you got to start making these demos right away. Start with your commercial at least and take it from there. Okay. You saw my voice exam already. You saw that you can use voice exam to organize your demos, organize the player, and it works really well. You can make your own voiceover demos, but man, I'm telling you, it's not a good idea for most people because these agents, these casting people are used to listening to the best produced demo. So if you come out with a she not so good demo, it's going to be a problem. It's not going to make you look good. J. Michael Collins makes demos. Demos That Rock is another company. Dave Fenoy makes animation video game demos. There's so many people that make demos. I don't make demos yet. I'm not the demo guy. However, 
I can point you to the demo guy, girl, person. No problem. You don't have to invest in demos for the rest of your career. Once you become who you want to be and get the jobs and paid for, your jobs become the demo. Find, ask the client, can I, can I get the link? Find the link on YouTube, on Vimeo. Rip it. Keep it as a demo clip. Don't take the whole thing. Just maybe five seconds of it. As long as it's allowed and asked for, you got yourself a nicely produced demo. It takes time. Otherwise, you have to do what all of us have done. All of us have paid a demo maker to make us a demo. Some demo makers, man, they're thieves. They're going to make your demo, make you sound like a million-dollar Michael Buffer. But then you get in the session. It's all ugly. You can't do what you put on the demo. You don't want to do that, man. Please take your time with the demo. We're almost there. Boom. In a typical demo, you want to show a good amount of range and attitude, pace and intensity. You want to show that range, right? So you want to aim for six to different, six to 10 different spots in 60 to 90 seconds. The shorter the demo, the better. But you got to show range. Range in acting, range in intensity, range in emotion. A great commercial demo will have different attitudes with big companies, right? You don't want to outdate a demo. You don't want to do a, you don't want to, you don't want a company that existed in the 60s and doesn't exist anymore on your demo. You want maybe Uber, someone who's spending DoorDash, someone who's spending a lot of money on ads to be on that demo. The foundation of your demo is your commercial demo. It's requested by every agent. They always want the commercial demo. It's coveted, right? So is animation, so is promo. Find what you're good at and you can make specific demos based on that. You got an animation one, cool, but you're the animation guru. Well, then you can have an animation demo, a character demo, a animated teen demo, right? You can get more specific with it. Take your time. Again, it goes by the genre, not necessarily by the voice. That's how you approach your demos. LinkedIn, we're almost there. Got a couple more slides here, about three more slides, and we go to Q&A. Thank you very much for being patient, joining me today. I appreciate you. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your love, man. I hope you find value. LinkedIn, over 80% of my clients are on LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn underutilized social media platform ever. Nobody loves LinkedIn, and I don't understand why. I love LinkedIn. Professionals are on LinkedIn. Everyone that has money that wants to give it to you is on LinkedIn. Get your LinkedIn profile. Create a cool one. Make it personal. Make it yours. See what other voice actors are doing. Don't copy it. Just kind of get the structure of it. What do you put in the LinkedIn? Well, you can put positive messages that are professional. Your only North Star Compass guide for LinkedIn is professional. Just keep it professional. Get in the habit of leaving reviews for the clients that hire you. The first thing I do when a client is done with me in a session, I go on LinkedIn, I add them, and I leave a review. Let them know I appreciate them. Let them know I, I, I appreciate the work. LinkedIn ads are super expensive, man. They're so expensive. They work really well, but they're way too expensive. So unless you got the money for it, don't mess with LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn groups are active, okay? Don't just look for voiceover groups on LinkedIn, though. Look for people that are hiring you, right? The marketing specialists, the, the ad agency groups. You want to be in those groups. Participate in those communities. LinkedIn learning is awesome. If you do not use LinkedIn learning, I'm telling you, you're missing out. It's great. I use LinkedIn Learning to learn everything you can imagine. You want to learn how to be a better engineer. You want to learn how to do audio engineering. You want to learn how to EQ. You want to go learn how to use HubSpot. You want to go learn how to use LinkedIn. You want to go learn how to speak better. LinkedIn Learning is the professional YouTube. It is immaculate. I love it. I hope you guys use it. I use it every day. I learn all the time. A lot of stuff I mentioned in here, you can go find on LinkedIn even deeper. LinkedIn learning, LinkedIn learning, LinkedIn learning, man. Trust me, it's amazing. Oh, 
Last three slides of coaching, coaching, coaching. All right, everybody wants a coach, needs a coach. I still get coached to this day. Don't be afraid of getting coached. If you're a paid registrant of this webinar, I appreciate you. We got a one-on-one. -on -one. We got a one-on-one -on -one date. Feel free to email me. You and me are going to break down your business, your creative needs. It's included in the price. There's no, don't, anything you want to ask me, we're going to break it down. So coaching is mandatory. Use it when you can get it for free, especially. Um, I still get coached. I don't get coached on the same things I used to, though. I used to get coached on how to read a script, how to negotiate, how to answer a production question. Now I get coached on, uh, hey, man, I'm trying to have a digital strategy for this, but I'm having conflicts with this company. Like, it's way more detailed. So, And I, and I get coached with stuff that I suck at. I'm not the best at, like, promo. I'm going to go find a promo coach and get better at it. Coaching is part of the game. Seek a voiceover coach for the genre of voiceover. If you come to me and you say, Kabir, I want to learn how to be Mickey Mouse. I'm not the coach for you. I don't know how to be Mickey Mouse. I, could, I don't even watch cartoons. I have a tough time. But there's a person out there who's the best Mickey Mouse you can imagine. He's going to be your coach. That's going to be the coach. So find the coach for you. Private coaching allows you to get specific questions answered really quickly. It's the best. Cost more. But man, cuts out all the noise. I coach students on the business and the techniques of finding emotions during an audition. I'm the emotion guy. I'm the emotion, poetry, commercial, voiceover guy. And the business guy. Find the coach for you. Not all coaches are. And if you have a coach that you think is a thief, you can't make out though. He's like, this is a good thief. I can't tell if he's a thief or not. Man, hit me up. I'll be able to at least give you another perspective because I know a lot of people in the industry. I've probably been coached and I'm always honest. It's, the all, it's all I got is honesty. So I'm always there for you if you have a question about a coach. That's not me. <clears throat> all right. This is a big slide, but we're going to go through some of these. Some of these already went through, so don't be overwhelmed. Tools, links, resources, something that when you get the downloadable PDF, you can click this, refer back to it, find the links, and go on the websites. Business education, edgestudio.com, old school website, old school. What is the most popular thing people go to Edge Studio for? If you're still with me, man, follow my link here. Check this out. Boom. Uh, not the rate sheet. I typed in the wrong thing. Script timer. This right here. Okay. <clears throat> this is a beautiful tool. If you haven't used this tool, it might change your life. It's a great thing, right? They, they made this tool probably 20 years ago, and it's used all the time. You get a script from a client or a client wants a quote. Hey, how much would you charge for this? You don't know certain information. Let's say you know the number of words in my script. Okay. Uh, it's 4,000 words. The script timer is going to tell you how long the file is going to be, depending on your speed. Right? It gives you a good range. I know this range is so ridiculous. <laughs> 4,000 words in 12 minutes if you're the fastest speaker in the world. Or let's just stay, stick with average. Hey, it's going to be a 22 minute voiceover file or let's just say in between 30 minutes and 20 minutes, 4,000 words gives you a kind of sense of what to, um, what to charge. Hey, I don't know my words. I just have the script. Cool. Take the script. You paste the script. It'll calculate for you. Works great. Ed studio, excellent resource for script timer. They have other stuff too, but man, I never went on anything else is use a script timer. VoiceOverExtra.com, industry news, industry headlines, workshops, classes. Check it out. Envato, a question from a, a student. They said, Kabir, how do you find the music to put in your logic or your DAW? Envato is a great tool. Artlist is a great tool. You can, um, I'm going to send you the PDF for all these links. Do not worry, I promise. After this whole event is done, I'm going to, um, 
just give me some time and I'm going to send this PDF to you. Uh, I'm also going to give you time to ask questions right after this. I know we're well over the two and a half hours, but I'm not tripping if you're not tripping. Uh, music, music, LinkedIn learning we covered. We, cover, we covered Global Voice Academy. Let's skip over. Covered Vocal Booth, Whisper Room, Studio Bricks, covered those. UA Audio, that's the Apollo Twin interface I mentioned in the beginning. That's their website. Voice Over Essentials, you want the Porta Booth, you want little tools that a voice actor has made. It's a great website. Um, Waves.com, that's for the plugins, right? The Rvox, the, the, the different plugins for the noise gate. Voice Zam we covered. HubSpot. Okay, HubSpot is a CRM, Customer Relationship Management. You get... You do business with somebody, they email you. HubSpot allows you to take their information, put it in a central space. It's free, and it works great. Track your data from your clients, and then it allows you to cater messages to them. There's other free ones, but I use HubSpot. SEM Rush is that paid tool that I just I did that basically showed you the authority score and the different words that we were looking at. GT Metrics was the optimization tool. We did that. Type form. Man, this is an excellent tool. It costs money. Excellent tool. Typeform.com. This tool is a tool that you would use to communicate to clients and extract info from them. You can ask them in a simple, short form survey. What is the usage? What is the term? Can you upload your script? And it's all digital. It's a great tool. One of my favorites. Use it every day. MailChimp. Newsletters. You want to create newsletters for your clients. MailChimp is great. Great us we covered earlier. WordPress is uh, another platform for making websites. NeilPatel.com. This guy is the guy. This guy is the guy for SEO, digital, anything. Lots of free information on his website. NeilPatel.com. Excellent free information on his website. I highly encourage you if you want to learn SEO to go on his website. AnswerThePublic.com. We went through that. And then you got your search council for Google. This link, all these links in the PDF, I will send it to you after our presentation. We are pretty much through with this. Let me make sure. All right. Coming to an end here. Whoa, whoa. I, I got ahead of myself. Give me a second. I'm sorry. That's where I wanted. There we go. Okay. I would encourage you to now digest all this content over, content over time by re-watching the presentation and taking advantage of your free one-on-one -on -one call, man. You can schedule that with me anytime. It don't expire. Just hit me up. 30 minutes, we get down. We'll address any... I would encourage you to write down your questions if I haven't answered them already, and we'll do that one-on-one. -on -one. Be patient. This is a marathon. If you implement some of these strategies, I promise you, you will be closer to your goals and making money in voiceover. These are foundational things you can do to create a business in voiceover. Coaching, connecting. You can scan the code here on your screen if you'd like. It'll take you to a, a coaching uh type form that I was mentioning. You can see example of my type form and how I use it. Uh, it's a great, it's a great tool. My information is there. You want to hit me up, text me, hit me up on social, follow me. Please follow me. Not because you sh I deserve to be followed, but because I will be uploading content one day and I do my best to answer your guys' questions in videos and I think you'll find it valuable. Okay. Boom. Thank you. Thank you for lasting this long, being a part of this, allowing me to teach you. I hope you found all this information valuable. I'm appreciative of you. I don't take your money for granted. I don't take your time for granted. Um, I want to go and answer these questions that I've um, saved here. Let's get down on them. Here we go. Um, how did I get into, okay. How did I get into VO work? And can you tell us about your first? Absolutely. I, <clears throat> I'm a poet. I've always been a poet my whole life. Write poetry since a kid. And there's no money in poetry, right? Back then, no YouTube, no poetry gigs, no poetry agents, nothing. Picked up a book called The Art of Voice Acting by James Allberger. Gave me great insight into the business of voice acting. 
And then I went into um and then I went into just learning voiceovers by taking classes. I got into it. Voices.com was about a couple years old back then. I created a free profile, started auditioning. I didn't book my first voiceover job. I didn't book my first voiceover job for like two years. It was a hundred dollar job and I cried because it made me believe that I could do it. You feel me? Like I just needed one job to let me know I could do it. That one job let me know I could do it and that's all I needed. One job. That one job was, uh, <laughs> I think it was a software company called Mac Keeper. It was like a, let me clean your virus filled Mac. And I had to do a testimonial. Dude, it was the worst thing. I, I watched it again. Years later, garbage. I should have gave them $100 just not to hire me. That's how bad I was. But nonetheless, I'm here. I'm not being dishonest with you when I tell you I used to be shit. And now I'm much better. So it takes time. But you could do it. How did you start a blog? We covered that. Um, what was the name of the first site? I'm sorry, I, I, I skipped that part. Thank you. Those tools were helpful. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a lot. How do you? Okay, this question is a little bit long. Give me one second. Let me really, oh, let me really get in on this one. Okay, that was a lot of very helpful info. I would love to know how do you do reactivation campaigns for the previous clients? I know you try to maintain a good relationship with clients, but say it's slow and you want to let old clients know that you are still here. How would you go about reminding them about, ah, this is a great question. Okay, so the question is, how do I organically go about staying top of mind to clients? For me, just for me, there's a, people who do it different ways. For me, it's LinkedIn, right? I connect with the clients instantly, same day on LinkedIn. Over time, not the same day, but over time. Over time, I'm going to leave them a review. I'm going to like some of their content when I actually like it, not fake. And then I'm going to message them once in a while. Hey, how you doing? Do you need anything? Do you have an audition? I'm always here. Stuff like that. LinkedIn is professional. The clients are all on there. My reactivation campaigns are like that right now. However, if you have HubSpot, if you got a good CRM, you got a good MailChimp campaign. I've done MailChimp newsletter campaigns before. Let me make a list. Specific sale for, you know, I remember I did, um, I gave a discount to churches during Easter. So I had a list of all my church clients, sent an email blast MailChimp. And got some business that way. So hope that answers your question. All right. How do you set up a Google My Business account? Ah, good question. Very simple. Google My Business. They used to have a Google My Business like separate login page. But if you type in Google My Business, they're going to take you to a setup page. That setup page is going to ask you for some information. You put it in. Are you a business? What type of business? Where are you at? Location? You want to be on Google Maps, etc. And then you can create your Google My Business page. They say the best place to bury a dead body is a second page of Google. That is so funny. That is so funny. Okay. This is a funny comment. The second place, the second best place to bury a dead body is a second page of Google. That is awesome. Okay. It is. However, the beauty is you're still on Google and you go from the third page to the second page. But what matters is a person searching for that specific topic that's listed on the second page. They're going to get to you faster. Maybe they didn't go on Google. Maybe there was a referral traffic. So being on second page is OK, too. No problem. Um, no agent yet. I answer the public. I still need a demo. Okay. If you if you still need a demo, that's okay. That's okay. You can save up and make a demo that way. You can find some producers that will charge less for demos. And maybe, hey, I don't want a, a full commercial demo. Do you think you can make me one spot? 
just so I have something to put on my profile. I think that's very helpful. So if you don't have the budget for a demo, no problem. Work on just a spot at a time. A couple of demos have been around a f been a few years. I like to get them refreshed. Uh, so if you have older demos, if your demos are, you know, a couple years old, I recommend a good rule of thumb. Update your demo every, uh, let me see, five years. It's a, good, it's a good rule of thumb. What happens in those five years? Your voice changes, your style changes. More importantly, the trends and marketing and advertising budgets change. So I would encourage you to update demos as you go. That's not a problem at all. It's actually, uh, for sure, beneficial. You mentioned we need extensive training one to two years before creating a demo. How do we train? Is the best way just to practice with auditions? Ah, great question. Great question. You train, yes. Using auditions on P2P websites is the best way to train because what happens is, especially on like certain websites, you'll get feedback. They like your demo. They mark you as a favorite. You get a call back. It's an instant response thing, right? The other way you do it, you pay for coaching. You pay for webinars. You pay for group monthly calls, group workouts. Clubhouse has free workouts with voice actors to go over different scripts. Take your time. EdgeStudio.com has a library full of scripts that you can tap into. Practice that way also if you don't want to be on the P2P websites right away. How do you manage your daily time and get all the learning, the auditioning, the website, the blogging? Oh, man. <clears throat> okay. Okay. As a freelance voice actor, you have to be the CEO, the accountant, the engineer, the voice actor, the representative, the marketing specialist. You got to be all these things, the website person. You got to be everything. Okay, I understand. It's a lot, right? People have jobs, they have families, they don't have that much time. How do you manage it all? Bit by bit. Task by task. Section by section. For the next three weeks, I'm only working on my website. For the next six months, I'm writing one blog every week on Fridays in the morning. Section it, bit by bit, day by day. It's the only way to do it. It's the only way to do it. Edge Studio has a lot of scripts. Absolutely, it's great. It really is a great resource, free scripts. Would you say one-on-one -on -one is more effective than workshops? Depends on your goal. One-on-one -on -one allows for direct communication and answers to your questions right away. So I'm going to answer them right away, or the coach, whoever it is, is going to answer them right away. You get 100% of the time versus in a workshop, you got 10, 12 students, you might get 10% of the time. Private coaching, more expensive, work, workshops way more cheaper. But there's also benefits to workshops. In workshops, you see other people's success and other people's failure. You get to compare yourself with others, and there's benefit to that because you see what level you're at, what level someone else is. Guided by your budget, do what you can. If your focus is creative only right now, you might benefit from maybe one or two privates and the rest workshops because in the workshops you can listen to other people's mess ups and script readings and learn from that. If your focus is business, I think one-on-one -on -one, because it takes a lot to address a certain person's business skills and business t uh, uh, goals. Their website's different. Their situation's different. Their um, time frame is different. Their needs, their rankings, everything is different. So that one-on-one -on -one would be beneficial. Hope that answers your question. Uh, let's run through. I got a one more long question here. What can I do daily to become a voice actor that has a little bit of experience? Training, radio work, classes. I do voice exercise. I went to my first webinar in Dallas, okay? or my first conference, I'm starting classes and I created social media sites to showcase my VO skills. 
post three days on TikTok. Ooh, ooh. Okay. <clears throat> okay. It's, it's a deep question. You're doing all these things. What can you do to become a better voice actor? At the end of the day, I would need you to um, focus on becoming a better voice actor by doing more auditions because the auditions will help you become a better voice actor. You will become better at reading out loud. You will be become better at learning to dis dis uh, dissect voiceover scripts. The message is quicker. You will become better at taking direction better. You become a better voice actor that way. Right now at your level, you may not want to focus on the marketing. You may not want to focus on the video posting on TikTok. What you may want to focus on at your current level is mastering the craft by auditioning and getting better at it, training, making sure that you can read a 60-second script in 52 seconds, <laughs> making sure that you can do all these things that are required. That's going to bring you the ROI, the return on investment better. There's different phases of growth. If you're a multinational company or a small one like me, there's different levels of growth. Right now, your growth just may be in becoming a better voice actor. As you become better, your craft, your growth stage will come in website work or marketing work or TikTok and voiceover video work. Right now, focus on the craft take classes, get training, and become better at reading out loud and reading scripts better for clients. That will serve you better, my friend. Um, let's see. What do you say one more is effective? Than the ah, here's another question. Is one more is effective. I think they're all effective. Coaching, workshops, they're all effective. Um, let me uh, close this here. I believe that is the end of our Q&A. What I want to tell you, just last 30 seconds here, please. At the end, <clears throat> I want you to know that, you know, everything that I went through here has been written out with a lot of thought, with a lot of love. And my goal is that you feel comfortable in messaging or emailing me and scheduling your one-on-ones with me. Feel comfortable doing that and have that desire so that I can help you for the next steps beyond all this stuff. This is just information. If you don't put the information into action, it becomes a problem. And then you feel like your money wasn't invested well. Allow me to help you put it into action. Let me know what you found most valuable. And let me know what you want to learn more about. In the survey after this webinar, there'll be a question. I want to learn more about tech or studio. I'm going to try to get these people to come talk and give you the information. I promise. Um, you know, take a look at the voiceover classes, the improv classes online. Take a look at acting classes. Just basic. There are so many free YouTube acting classes, you know. Take a look at these things. I have a YouTube voiceover section that has some cool old videos about the clicker and how to use it or um, finding a motivational read on my YouTube at Kabir's voice. Take those opportunities and I promise you, you'll get a better ROI. I want to thank everybody for investing their time, their money with me. I appreciate you. If you have any questions, any concerns, man, you have my info, contact me, email me, let me know. At the end of this webinar, you'll get a rewatch link. The rewatch link, take some time to process. Give it about 24 hours or less. You'll get it. I'm going to send you a downloadable PDF. Reach out to me for your one-on-ones. Thank you very much. I answered all your questions Q&A live. Let me make sure. Yes, I did. You're welcome. You're welcome. I appreciate you as well. Uh, thank you. I'll talk to you guys later. If you need anything, reach out. I'm here. I got you. Peace.